Hello and welcome. Today is January 19th, 2024, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. All right, it's the Pope Cope Challenge. So yesterday, Chris uh, challenged some of us to come up with a Pope Cope jingle uh, that we can lovingly play when it's appropriate. So uh, I, I took this challenge upon myself, and I will play it for you shortly. Um, it's, it's meant in good fun. Sorry, Catholics, I'm not trying to get myself burned at the stake. Uh, but we do sincerely believe this stuff. It is by faith alone we are saved, um, not of works that no man can boast, etc., etc. You'll hear it. Anyway, so uh, maybe some some lovingly uh, loving jabs here and there. But it's meant in good, good humor and good fun. And I also get a $50 gift card, I am told, um, <laughs> from Chris. Let's hold him to it. Okay, so uh, we, we talk about... Um, an interesting thing, there, there is YHWH, the tetragrammaton for the name of God. Um, someone floats the theory about how if you trace that back to like a pictograph or whatever in Hebrew, it means hand and nail. So we deal with that theory a little bit. I think we kind of hammer it out. It's kind of like a mystical, spiritist type of, type of idea. Um, I haven't checked out enough into it to see if it is really grounded in hard fact. Um, It would be interesting, but it seems like there's enough um, hubbub about it that it is not, that it probably is not. But it is interesting. Um, Then we talk about how people will say Mary is sinless, particularly because uh, the Bible quote that says, you know, Mary, full of grace. And they're like, well, if you're full of grace, you can't be full of sin. Uh, But it's interesting that we also hear the same thing about Stephen as he's about to be stoned, that he's full of grace. So either uh, full of grace means sinless, and now you've got Stephen as well as Mary. Uh, Well, they don't want to take that one. So perhaps a couple people are going to make new decisions that that phrase, full of grace, does not mean sinless. It just means full of grace. Okay, Um, so then we get some actual uh, Orthodox and Catholic people to talk about. It's a good one. It's not always one-sided. So some actual Catholics uh, who know what they're talking about, or at least know their beliefs and why they believe it, um, talk about the Pope and the blessing gay people. This is not going away. It is, is just a conversation that... Keeps coming up all the time. Um, it, it's like the, <laughs> it's like the uh, what was it, American Chopper guys, how it's like the dad says something, then the next meme, the son says something, and they go back and forth and fight, or like the woman and the cat. Like, it's this, and the cat's like, it's that. That's, that's what this is. Goodness. Maybe that should be a meme. Someone get on that. Um, oh, maybe Chris can give another contest winner for that. Um, the Catholic says this, the process says that. Anyway, so we talk about that and how the Protestants... I think it's just a a bad idea. It's brushing too close to sin and how the Catholic defenders think it's just very inclusive and it's getting them one step closer to God. Whatever. Anyway, so um, we cover that and more topics and uh, there are sparks fly. Sparks fly, of course they do. Um, Not as much as I thought, but um, sparks do fly. So it's fun. It's entertaining. And there's also some lucid moments of good uh, cogent thought and argumentation. Not like argue fight, but like argue like good points are made. Okay, so check out the Ask a Christian book on Amazon. Check out the Ask a Christian store. Grab some stuff. Grab the book. Read it. Support this podcast. Sharing the gospel of people uh, with uh, gospel of Jesus with people on the internet. And I'll take speaking class. So take care. Have an awesome day. And without further ado, here is the Pope Cope. Oh, it's the Pope Cope. The Pope Cope. And just enough lies to offer false hope. Heresies and conspiracies Where do you see that salvation ain't free? It's the gift of God that's been given to me Why can't you see salvation is free? Between Catholic and Orthodoxy No matter what you say, they're the same to me The first Pope Peter who was given the keys Even he says you just have to believe Read it for yourself, Acts 10.43 All you gotta do is read it and believe Baptism isn't even necessary You know our fathers or Hail Marys You don't even need a rosary Well that's just it, no purgatory And don't try to fight it, just let it be Put your faith in Jesus, he will save I seem to remember yesterday, <clears throat> and we have replays, you offering a $50 Amazon gift card for the winner of the Pope Cope Jingle Challenge, and I think I'm the only one who took up that challenge, therefore, am I the winner, since I'm the only entry? I mean, Nate, you 
you bless my life so much that I'm just going to give you a fifty dollars <laughs> Amazon gift card, just just for funsies, just because you know. I so know nothing to do with winning because of like candy and you know some kind of weird celery soda or something. I was going to donate that, to that that Tina me. Well, I mean, if you're just handing out $50 gift cards, you know, God said to take care of the widows and the fatherless. Wait, so just... just, If you were in my church, you'd be getting a salary from me. So you're doing this to be a nice guy? Nothing to do with, like, ability or amazing, like, Freddie Mercury vocal skills? Uh, Like, just just to be nice? I mean, have you played the Pope Cope for the crowd yet? Or not? I can't. The YouTube link's up there. They can hear it if they want. I can't play... Uh, Oh, I guess I... Oh. I'm going to put it at the beginning of the podcast so everyone can hear it in glorious audio. I mean, yeah, but like, play it over your mic right now, man. It's it's well worth it. Uh, you do it. I don't have the ability to. My my well, I'm computer driving right used now. to record this thing. I mean, I have even better. I <laughs> even comments. even better. Do it while you're driving. Send a couple people some texts. No, no. The official position of the Ask a Christian podcast is don't text and drive. Yeah. Well, so. Lucky for you, St. Worf is, you know, on a long fuse today. Really? I'm on a short one. My, my kid is home from school. They were, up, like, vomiting everywhere yesterday. So I don't know if it's, like, a stomach bug going around or what. But, yeah, if I, like, run to, this, run to the bathroom, you probably know I've got it, too. My child's diseasing me. I see yeah, their little eyes, eyes from the other room looking at me. Children are... I think children it, are uh... Children are disease factories. Oh, it looks like she's taking a turn for the better as she missed school this morning. That's how that works 100% of the time, by the way. Dude, my kid hates missing school so much. Like, he will be, like, falling out sick and be like, nah, I'm going to school. And it's because, like, they give him so much work if they miss school that it takes him, like, a week to make it up. And he's just like, nah, nobody wants that. And I'm like, <laughs> He, he has never missed a day of school, like, in, since, like, I don't know, third grade or something. Just because he refuses. He's like, no, I can, I'll, I can have Ebola, and I'm just going to spread it to my whole class, because I don't want to have to do the classwork at home. See, your kid is the kind of kid that pisses me off. Yeah, good, yes. He's raising him in his image. I know, with a complete and total lack of concern for those with immunocompromised systems. Yeah, everybody should wear a mask all the time, Nate. So freaking And goggles, crazy. because eyeballs are mucous membranes, so you can absorb disease through your eyes, so you got to wear goggles, too. And just wrap what yourself you in plastic wrap and put a bag over your head. She runs a company that has those face shields, so she wants everybody to buy her face shields. They have little daisies on them, they're nice. Are you serious? <laughs> I would, I get, it'd be weird, but I guess I could believe she worked at a face shield company. No, she just had a kid with a compromised immune system that fucking constantly got sick in school because people sent their kids to school sick. You know, well, that bothers me. Well, in the me, defense like... of people, sorry, in the defense of people who send their kids to school sick, where I am, if your kid misses 18 days, they send CPS. Ooh. And it's January, and we're at day nine. So, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I send my kids to school sick because I don't want the truancy officer and child protective here. Yeah, but see, they find really, the cages and dungeons yeah, they and everything. Say they, Steph, they say they do that here, too, um, but like at day 10. Um, but, you know, my kid missed 19 last semester, so... Oh, really? Okay, that makes me feel better. Mine missed 25. My son with the health issues missed 25. So they did call us. um, And we said, look, he has a health condition. It's on his records. And they were like, okay, my daughter missed 19. And they said if she had one more, they would have to come and visit. So it seems like they're giving my son leeway. But I guess technically, no, they never did come. I mean, this is also the child who didn't want to wear pants to school. Yeah. Like, we well, have friends down the road, time. like, they are determined to put their children around mine, like, no matter how sick they are, and they're of this belief, like, oh, you know, it's good, it'll be- build up their immune systems, ah, I'm like, nonsense, that's freaking plague. 
So are except these they never the... except they never no no they're even more they're other ones further down the road <laughs> except they never no the other ones they're like no we're sick we're staying home I'm like yeah that's that's one good thing but the others like they're like it could have anything and they're like oh you know they've got swelling in their face or they're puking or oh we think it's just food poisoning when like everyone in the house is like got it and not eating the same thing anyways so they're like oh yeah she's had like a fever of like 102 for like five days but oh. But they will never tell us until our kids are already there. So, like, hey, your kids can play. I'm like, sure. I, like, drop them off. And uh, then, like, later, uh, when I go to pick them up, they're like, oh, yeah, this is just vomiting. Blah, blah, blah. But this has been like that only a few days. I'm like, what? I'm like, come on. They're like, oh, it's good. It just builds their immune system. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, give the parent the right to decide that, not you being, like, my kids, like, Lazarus in there. And, yeah, sure, bring your kids on down. And let's infect them. Anyway. Hey, Nate, you want to file a smallpox? I'm pretty sure they already got that. So, so Chris, um, what's your, what's your review? Was it, uh, was it theologically sound and whimsical enough to not get me burned at the stake? We're, we're turning this back oh, to me now. I mean, no, they're going to burn you at the stake. I mean, you know, let's, like, let's because they would anyways. Burn. Yeah. I mean, you, you're a dirty prot. You're going to get burned at the stake. Um, I'll be in the but, email. Uh, love you guys. <clears throat> Shout out. Love you guys. Don't burn me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the magisterial thing. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I thought it was good. I thought that um, we should have like a 15 second like bumper one because like the I think it's like a minute and 20 or something is the runtime on it. So and then it's my 101, son, course, Chris. It's 101. Sorry. My son, of course, was listening and he was laughing and he goes has he never heard of a bridge? And I was like, okay, music man. Like, I don't know, even know what a bridge is. You don't is. do bridges a jingle, especially 15-second like ones. I don't know. I don't know any of these things. I don't Tell know your son. Tell your little Calvinist scholarly son you don't do bridges and jingles. Ah. Okay, well, I don't know. He thought it was a song, so I was like, that's just a jingle. And he's like, I don't care. It needs a bridge. And I was like, okay, whatever. Sure. So, all right. And it needs a chorus. He, he's, he said... So the music kid said it needed a bridge and a chorus because I think he wanted it to be like a longer song because he was laughing. Um, then so tell his dad to offer a higher thing. price gift card. I mean, you know, <laughs> I could go on Fiverr and get a jingle made. I mean, come on. Do it. Do it. Let's see the result. Oh, my gosh. You know, that, that would be funny. Like, you just get, like, you know, Fiverr, like, all these Chinese folks making a song for you and, like, yeah, it'd be good. They, they have no it, idea about anything that you're talking about. Like this one time, I, I was so desperate for, like, to ask a Christian logo. Thank God uh, heaven smiled upon us and sent Malik to, to do this little logo we use for Ask a Christian. Um, and free graphics on the internet um, that, that are okay to be used. Because um, I, I spent, like, a good chunk of change on Fiverr in several failed attempts. And it was, like, from the people that say, like, guaranteed happiness, guaranteed you be happy with our work. Um, we keep doing till you happy. Like, that type of people, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, bang for your buck. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm guaranteed to be happy. Um, but there were the, it was these guys, they're straight up Muslim. Like, you, I mean, I don't want to assume, but, I mean, it was it was really, really apparent. They were Muslim. And they were, you know, they were, like, the ones who, like, you know, got the bid or whatever. So I sent them. So, like, these Muslim guys are designing, like, a big cross for me. And it's just, like, the most, like, 1994, like, Microsoft, like, office clip art. It, it was so bad. And I wanted to be nice, so I went back and forth, like, multiple times with each of them. Like, okay, can, can you do this? Or, or really, that's, that's completely the opposite of what I'm going for. So, like, after a few times of back and forth, I'm like, okay, guys, the, thanks. They're like, are you happy now? Are you happy now? I'm like, you did what you said you would do. <laughs> Which was apparently go until I just got sick of asking. Anyway, so you get what you pay for. I suppose. I mean, I know lots and lots of graphic designers, so if that's ever a thing. Like, I work, Do I work you? In the yeah. I worked where in you, like, for like 20 years. Where have you been for the last 10 years of my life? I don't, I don't know. Like, do graphic art, like, graphic artists are like the hardest thing in the world to find that aren't like, I, I mean, if budget was no limit, but I mean, you know people to work I mean, for cheap. I think off the top of my head I think I've got like at least 15 people I can call on for graphic design 
Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. What's up, Albanian? Oh, Google just beeped. It heard you say that. It, it's Chris. Hi. Chris R. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Have you heard that's the new? It. Have you heard the new jingle, Albanian? It's that, really that's good. a funny video you make, Nate. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, you know, you know. I'll put. I'll put. That's that's all right because uh, I'd put uh, a, anyone who tries to become a pop instead of the pop. I would put their face into it. Like you can become pop Nate or pop Chris Ro, you know, or pop uh, Calvin. So yeah, I would put yeah. them there. Or like, or like no, all no, the popes pop. at the Council of Constance. Because there were three at the same time, everybody was declaring themselves pope. My grandma. Yeah, but was we pope we knew we Constance. knew which one is an anti-pope, right? We knew which one is uh, is an anti-pope because of the church. But you won't oh, know what's that, going on that, in your uh, in your head. Uh, you anyway, Chris, Chris, is, you're is, not supposed to talk because any grace we receive is from God, so we irresistible grace. So it's not for you to blame anyone. So just keep 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 aside. Let us Christians talk among one another. I don't know what's uh, happening. Albanian Albanian doesn't like church history every time I point it out because it's really rough. No, no, no. You you don't like your church history because you you have irresistible grace. I have irresistible negativity according to you. So uh -huh. don't blame me. Blame your God. You don't even right? know what irresistible grace means. It's hilarious. Okay, wait, wait. Hang on. Before we fight, before we fight, I have something that maybe you could both speak on or more likely it'll be it'll probably be quick. You'll say, like, no, that's wrong. Um, okay, before we all fight, and by the way, Chris and Albanian, you guys would both like you know burn burn the rest of us um, at the we stake love each like fifteen hundred years ago way. <laughs> with fire and flame. Okay, um, so someone told me last night I am incredibly skeptical. If true, interesting. I really, really don't think it's true though. Um, okay, has anyone ever heard that the tetragrammaton, the you know Y A or Y H W H, in some way? They were trying to explain it to me, and I'm just like, okay, okay, I gotta go, I gotta go, because um, I really wasn't interested in hearing their explanation. Um, it, it just seemed a little far-fetched. Um, so they were saying that the YHWH somehow, in some way, links back to a meaning of like, oh, what was it? It was, behold the hand and behold the nail. Has anyone ever heard that? I guess that's my only question. Uh, Has anyone no. ever heard of such a claim? No. That sounds like some Courtney Cope. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> you have zero chill. <laughs> so, I, I look at the Hitfield Tim. Saint Dwarf is here. Okay, so like as the as like the heresy like like uh you know heresy sniffer, like you haven't even heard like such a claim to be like, oh I've heard that, that comes from this, it's totally wrong, here's why. You've just never heard it. I have never heard that in my lifetime, no. And Albanian and all the uh, church fathers, no one ever wrote about that? Me either. No, no. I thought Chris, because he has... No, uh, and all the out. church fathers after the 5th century did read Hebrew, so unlikely. Hey, why? Because it always goes to, like, succession of, of you know, I guess the succession of the apostles and everything but what is the basis for having to have a succession like wh why uh, it, like where do they where do you guys get the the need for a succession versus like the need for just stopping it right there like if peter's the first pope the apostles like there doesn't need to be a succession like it's done like it is written it is done like all you need to do is what these people say till the end of time like you, how, don't, you don't how, need a successor. So why do you get the the need for succession? Yeah, how are you gonna find the the heresies that are in rise now? Like Hebrewism, uh, uh, like Calvinism, um, like uh, <laughs> like uh, Mormon Church, like, like every other church. How well. how would you? Which you don't have the authority to tell them you're not a Christian because literally they don't believe in Trinity. Jehovah Witness. They, they butchered the Bible. So who has the authority to, to judge what the Bible contains? Well, yeah, but I mean, authority is pretty ethereal because like, you know, you could say, well, the Catholic Church has the authority to tell Jehovah's Witnesses they're not Christians, um, but Jehovah's Witnesses are still like, yeah, we're Christians. What are you going to do about it? And the Catholic Church is 
well, nothing. We're just going to tell you're not Christian. Yeah, and I ask so, I mean, them, how, how do you define a Christian? I define a Christian, it comes from the apostles, and laying out of hands, just like uh, Matthias got uh, replaced, uh, he replaced Judas, so the Iscariot. So uh, that means that wasn't only for that time. That was that was to you know. So we, you know, we have the twelve, uh, you know, apostles and so on. So yeah, the, you can see in in the, in the acts of the apostles all, all over, like like uh, Saint Paul's laying out of hands, and then others laying out of hands and so on. So you have that's biblical. Okay. Otherwise, you would lose it. Like how how did they fight against Arian heresy? Sorry. How did they fight against Aryan heresy? Because there was a there was a body, there was a church to go against it. Okay, well, presumably there would still be a church, and the way you'd find is sniff out heresies is well, let's do what you know the first Pope Peter said to do, and if anyone does something different than that, that's a heresy. But um, before, um, so I have a sick kid, and I just really don't care today. Um, but Steph, I'd like to give you the opportunity to say something sensible and rational. Uh, before uh, I turn it over to Chris and Albanian to have a death match. So, wait, Steph, would you wait. like to say anything nice and pleasant? <laughs> or, or or no? You, you can say something mean, too. Can I? Uh, go ahead, Serendipity. Can I jump in real quick? I was in a bad area, so I couldn't answer you. On the behold the hand, behold the nail. Oh, yeah. That comes from the pictography of the Hebrew language, which at, at one point in time, I had heard that like if you wanted to learn Hebrew, it's actually easier to learn the pictography of the Hebrew language first. Um, it makes the letters make more sense when you um, look at them, I guess, phonetically. But when when you look at the pictography and you read it from right to left as opposed to left to right, it does translate as behold the hand, behold the nail. Really? Like 100% that's yeah. my interpretation, like totally it does. No, no. No, it doesn't or no, it does? Yeah, it, is it, it does. Pic is there any way you could like, link, is there any way you could like link me something about that? Because I mean, if, if that's true, I mean, is that not interesting that, you know, the, the creator of everything, um, the name, I guess, pictorially translates to hand and nail. And I mean, it doesn't seem like too far of a stretch that, you know, Jesus crucifixion, hand and nail. I mean, that just seems like one of those things that's really hard to disassociate. Well, there's lots of things like that in scripture. I know, but that's just one. Like I mean, some, that's a pretty big one. Is there a link to this? Is, like, is there some kind of like thing I can click on and read about this? Yeah, like, can you send me something that Chris can't refute? Because, I mean, that's, just, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good point. Yeah, I'm driving. <laughs> But when I get I home, myself. I would imagine that you can probably do um, like a Google search of uh, okay, final search. Hebrew right, and so photography. Yeah. And then just you can literally look up the letters and translate them. But wait, what's the letters like in um, like? I mean, because Y is not Hebrew, right? So I mean, what? Okay, I'm just gonna ask. Um. um uh, Steph, yeah, go ahead and say Gnostic. something. I just looked it up. It's a it's a whole Gnostic thing. Well, but is it it's, is it true? Like I don't care. Knowledge. Like who? It's not true. Well, it's secret knowledge. It's Gnosticism. Okay, okay, but but based on her claim, which I'm still fuzzy about, if if you like are reading Hebrew right and you look up the actual things, then if it's true, it's true. If if like for for Y and H and W H, there's like a picture of a hand and a nail. It's like. Okay, well, it doesn't matter what Gnosticism would say about it. I mean, it is a hand, and it is a nail, and it translates to these letters, right? It's like if, if Hitler tells you the time, it's like, but it's Hitler! It's like, but he said it's 307, and it's 307. Like, he's right. You just said Hitler's right! Not to compare God to Hitler, but you know what I mean, right? Like, if, if something is, is a fact, I mean, it's a fact. Like, regardless of if they say it's, you know, some Gnostic thing about it. Uh, no, like lose everyone. No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm on that. Uh, Serendipity, what was it? He Hebrew picto, what was it? Pictograph or pictogram or what? what was uh, the word? The Hebrew pictof pictography. Um, you can you can pull a chart. Um, 
like you can download charts on Google for uh, Hebrew pictograms for the, the pictures, the translations of the letters and the letters um, <clears throat> for uh, Yahweh would be like, cause it'll say like, I think it's, Hey, um, is the H. Uh, oh, what was the W? Um, I remember Hey was the H. Can't remember what the W was, and then Hey, and then um, uh, Vav was the the Y. I remember that. But they have like a pictogram chart where you can look those up, and it gives you the definitions of the the symbols. Okay, I'm just gonna wait until there's someone who. Yeah. I have a whole thing. I can send the link. Yeah. So I just you instantly got a whole thing. Yeah. Like I, there's a whole discussion of it, and basically it's just uh, gematria and mysticism. So it's like it's like numerology. Anyway, um, but wait, uh, Steph was gonna say something nice and rational before you guys start fighting. Uh, <laughs> Steph, here's your chance. Here's a one, Steph. No. Yeah. Down. Apostolic succession of, uh, for the popes is important because they hold to the idea that the church is the continuation of Christ on earth. So if they, they put the authority of, like the Catholic tradition will put the authority of interpreting for the modern day into the hands of a person who was formally and divinely given that authority. So that's why they would have, it would be important that they have an unbroken chain because the church is the physical representation of Christ and his authority. Um, the other aspect of that is that we would, even when as Protestants, we look at church history, we would put more weight on Polycarp, for example, than, you know, a theologian from the random 1100s, right? Because he was right there learning directly. So the same way that a good blacksmith might trace their lineage back to other good blacksmiths, a pope claiming authority is going to want to trace their lineage back to others who've been given divine authority by God on the church's uh, behalf. One more follow-up for Steph. Um, when is your uh, confirmation? I'm not Catholic. I'm never going to be Catholic, okay? But there's this thing you can do called listening, where you ask Catholics questions, and then you hear what they say. And then you get answers that make sense. It's kind of remarkable. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, no, I'm not saying that I agree with the importance of apostolic succession. I'm saying that's why it's important in the tradition. Doesn't seem right. right. Okay. That's the modern okay, Chris. Chris. Well, the, the Bible oh, refers to the... Oh, you, oh, Chris, oh, Chris, please, yeah, Wait a minute. Could we let the Catholic confirm whether or not that's a fair interpretation oh, that's before? That's true. She said confirm. Yeah, if, if someone has the ears to hear, yes, that was amen. Because literally, uh, what Jude says, uh, this is the faith that w was once, uh, once was handed down to us, you know, either by letter or by the word of mouth, like Paul says. So that's the tradition, that's the, the Christian tradition, you know. So who's going to hold that? Well, the apostles and laying out of hands, their hands to others. So you can go for an example in old testament where the sons of david wanted to self proclaim themselves as the kings and then and then no um, the promise was at solomon so um that goes to so show you that you cannot do, come from the back door you know the, my sheep hear my voice and and they know me and i know them jesus says so there is no other christ as if there is no other christ there is no other body of christ but his body that he uh, he breathed into the disciples, you know, uh, in, in the upper room. So that's in short. You know, I invited you up here. Um, so, uh, so you guys, you guys are listening, right? Steph wanted us to listen. So he just told you you're all going to hell. By the way, that's that's what he said. If you're listening, hey, hey Chris, just let me say this one thing. It's not just Catholic that claim apostolic succession. The Eastern Orthodox, which is split from the Catholic, and also the Anglican Episcopalian Church also claim apostolic succession. That's why the Archbishop of Canterbury is, they would say, is the leader of the church right now. Yeah, we, we have to trace, sorry, we have to trace their, their founder. 
uh, and any church you can trace them. We don't deny author orthodox the, the the apostolic succession. They don't deny us. They say we're equal. So that's that's the only difference between us. But otherwise, we're we're come from the apostles. That's the way we say we hand one, the faith that once was handed on by Jesus and then by the apostles. Yeah. So so that's all the modern cope. And you're right, Sean. There there is claims of apostolic succession in all kinds of traditions, uh, including Jerry Hayes thinks he's got apostolic succession. So there you go. Uh, oneness Pentecostal with apostolic succession. That's my favorite. Um, Seems but, like a good so, time to when I coat, asked him, just do what your first Pope Peter said. When I asked Jerry, who is your founder, he gave me the name of his founder of his church. So I don't know how he got his apostolic succession. But anyway. Oh, he can trace it all the way back to Peter, man. He, 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 makes, a, he makes a whole thing of it. I mean, he could take you down the rabbit trail for two hours. You know, you know, he changed the creed, right? You, did you ever hear his creed? Even if you ever Jerry? speak to him, yeah, ask him for the creed. Change the creed. Oh, 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 man, man, you know, uh, he makes God uh, a Unitarian God, and and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just ask him, please, and and uh, make sure you record it because I missed it. I didn't record it. I so wish I recorded it. Oh well, I'm sure we can go find it on YouTube. Anyway. So, Nate. so in the. Sorry, I was just going to say, I put a link in the chat. My PTR has got a picture of the, the Hebrew pictogram chart. Okay, thanks. And I was looking up, uh, at least um, AI seems to suggest that it, it's like a, it says it's like a spiritual thing, like linked to like, you know, mysticism, it's words, not mine, and like Kabbalah and other stuff. But yes, I will take a look at that. Uh, Chris. Proceed. Yeah, just just the real historical quick answer. According to the early church, the reasons that they looked for apostolic succession was that uh, heresy was so rampant in the early church that they wanted to know who taught you. So, like when you rolled up into town, they were like, "Great, who taught you?" And it's like, "Oh, you're a disciple of Polycarp. Cool, you know, like or oh, you're a disciple of Clement. Okay, you know." And it was a it was a a quick check to make sure that this person had a teacher who was teaching orthodoxy as opposed to a teacher that was, you know, a, a Gnostic heretic or an Arian or something like that. And so in the early church, I'm talking real early, like we're talking like 120s, 130s, um, they, they would just want to know who your teacher is to make sure that you're not, you know, peddling some nonsense. But then they also checked you against the scripture as well. Um, not just like who your teacher was that gave you some type of authority. They also were just like, well, okay. You know, it would be like us. It would be like, well, who's your favorite preachers? And you're like, Joel Osteen is my favorite preacher. And then it's like, oh. Hey, I got this picture. Can you Photoshop, all the, can you Photoshop all the people out of it besides uh, Joel Osteen? I get this Photoshop picture. <laughs> that was awesome. Sorry, aren't, aren't you doing the same, Chris, uh, to be called yourself a Calvinist, which Paul says, do not call yourself a Napoleon and I'm a Skephas. Uh, well, only I mean, Jesus just, died for you, so aren't you doing the same? Well, I was going to say, you know who else does this? I keep drawing parallels between Pharisees and, you know, you. But, I mean, they do the same thing. Like, you know, <laughs> like, how, like, how no, no, often? No, no, that, like, that, well, hang on, hang can on, I hang answer on, that? hang on. Can I answer? If people, no, hang on. If people stop interrupting me, you're just, I'm just going to drop you. I, I don't have the ability to yell as loud as Chris. Um, but, no, the point is, like, every time, like, we've seen, like, rabbis in here, and they meet another rabbi, and they're trying to, like, sniff them out. They're like, who was your teacher? Who did you study under? Who did you study under? And it gets pretty vicious. Um, and after, like, yelling and screaming, they're finally like, oh, you know, Ben Sir Rabbi, Ben, 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 David, David? They're like, oh, yeah, I know him. They're like, oh, okay, cool then. After they've, like, yelled and screamed for an hour. I've seen it. It's entertaining and, and cringy. But anyways, so that. Okay, go ahead, Owen. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, I don't mean... Uh, just yeah, you, you said a good point there, but Jesus reaffirmed the authority. He says, When they sit in the seat of Moses, they have the authority, he didn't deny the authority nowhere. So, but even though there were these two, there were all this going on, even they didn't pr practice what they preached, but he, but the, he reaffirmed their authority. And so now, uh, we call it uh, the, the chair of Peter, which uh, that's where, where the keys are. Do you think, but surely you, you would say something has gone wrong. Um, and I can already give you an argument or, or, well, maybe not, but you would say something has gone wrong. For example, if, uh, the very, you know, like the, the second or third people, like, you know, 
to succeed Peter or the apostles, um, you know, in succession, did something that like, they're like, okay, forsake Jesus and worship Satan. This is the way. Like, you wouldn't say, well, he's got the authority to do that. So, all right, let's do that. He's got to be right. You would say, hopefully, you would say, heck no, no, you're wrong. Like, it doesn't matter how you succeeded, you are wrong, right? Would you say that, or would you not say that? I'll, I'll, just, go and, I'll just go and become a Coptic Orthodox, then, um, if that happens. But the thing is, bro, the thing is, um, if you believe Edo? in the Bible... <laughs> so, I, 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 so, the thing is, if that happens... That means because remember what the Bible says. Jesus says, uh, you know, the gates of hell won't prevail against my church. We believe, we believe in those keys. Not the not the Pope is in charge. The Spirit of Christ is in charge. It, it, the Pope is not in charge. The Pope he dies tomorrow. He's replaced, so he's not going to stay there forever. You know. So, but no, it's God who, who is who is directing the church. That's what we believe, not in the Pope. But it seems like there's too much uh, linking of like church structure and authority uh to uh, tied with salvation which i mean you're, maybe you're saying like amen but i would say that's a problem because when it becomes to the church's job to pronounce who is saved and who is not that's a god thing so whatever jesus says should go if you want to know about like some sort of church structure or architecture in the church you know ask a successor of someone but it seems so, like since they they link it and you're like no if the church, quote, the church says you are not saved, you are not saved. If the church says you are saved, you are saved. It's like, well, no. Like, mm -hmm. that's a Jesus thing. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we, we don't believe that. I'm careful. I don't want to be drunk. Um, uh, yeah, we don't believe that. The thing is, uh, if, well, uh, yeah, we, we are Christians. We all believe in the Bible. Just read Hebrews thirteen seventeen what it says. And the answer is there. So that's what the, that's the job of the church to guide your soul. So literally, the Bible says it, the church job is to guide your soul, and we believe it's the spirit of God who guides our soul, not the the sinner itself, but the spirit of God who put the sinner in charge and 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 using every time every time in every age, God used sinners to 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 fulfill his uh, you know his promises and his. Uh, you know, our salvation for our salvation. So, um, yeah, that's Hebrews thirteen seventeen. It says that the the church guides our so guides our soul. Otherwise, you in hands of uh, atheists, you in hands of whoever interprets the Bible. So, uh, is the interpretation of the Bible that's the problem? It's not the Bible and am, itself. And why am I the one talking? I thought it was supposed to be Chris. And Chris, you are truly full of extra grace. And by the way, if I think was it you that was talking about like the Hail Mary full of grace, Albanian. Um, as another reason, which by the way, yeah, it was you, right? Like, you know, the angel never bowed down. Like that's not in scripture, but it was like kind of the full of grace thing, which led to the views of Mary. But it also says the same st thing about Stephen. So, you know, it says Stephen was full of grace. So does that mean he's sinless? But I really wanted to get Chris back in here. Um, yeah, can I just... up? Uh, um The thing is, no, I just, I imagined when, when, uh, when, uh, what's it called? Solomon went in his mother came in and he bowed in front of his mother and made the throne for her that's how i like uh, yeah yeah uh, the bible is silent but i would i would guess like he didn't just go there and and then yeah i, I just assumed that probably well, you know i thought the bible said that but i didn't so I, yeah i, I mean, caught myself on that well that's that's admirable but i mean if anything i think we would have loose evidence to the contrary because you know it seems like um the amount of times men try to bow down to angels and they're like do not bow to me get up get up yeah you know um so it would it, it would kind of inversely also not make sense if the angels were like no no humans do not bow to us um presumably because you only bow to god well they wouldn't bow to humans either because they would only bow to god um Anyway, so I would say there would be there would probably be some more evidence for that. But yeah, what about the Stephen thing? Like where he's you know about to be stoned to death, and it says you know uh, Stephen was full of grace. Like it, it's just like what it says for Mary. So does that mean Stephen was now a third person who was sinless? Uh, sometimes it says full of the spirit, so the spirit of God was in him. But I I I don't know I don't know. Um, Stephen was have... full of grace. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can. You can. Get, so either you can they say were. That, but, yeah. 
So either they were both sinless or that's not what full of grace means. It just means they were full of grace, not well, full of sinlessness. When, uh, yeah, when the Bible says that, that Stephen was full of grace, that means the heaven were full. And he could, remember, when you're full of grace, he could even see Jesus sitting on the throne. So Mary was already full of grace. The angel says, hey, hell full of grace. So do you, do you, do you think Mary could be like Stephen? She could see, she could see heaven? According well, to the typology. That's what the Bible said. Yeah, you, know, yeah, exactly. I, you should have never left. I'm trying to I'm trying to add you back up here. I keep inviting you, but I guess it's not working. Who's that? Ido. Hey, serendipity. Can I make you a mod and could you try sending Ido an invite? Sure. Um I can't trust any of these other devils. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust me. It works. Alhamdulillah. Hey, alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, Nate. That's a very interesting argument with Stephen being full of grace. I'll need to look into that. I think. Um, not gonna lie, that that's a good one. Uh, I'll check that out. Uh, I wanted to speak on something as well, like uh, on uh, I think Steph's explanation of why the Pope is so important for the Catholics. It's a very good explanation she brought. But I want to add something to it because obviously it's uh, it's not a full argument she brought, and I'm not intending to give a full argument. Neither, but I just want to emphasize on something also very important for the Catholic belief. It's the point that it's not just that he is the first among equals or this and that. It's more the point with Jesus telling Peter that you have the keys of heaven. And then he continues saying this very important phrase, whatever you bind on earth will be bound. Or whatever you bound on loose on earth will be bound. And whatever you bind or loose in heaven will be on or loose. And the the... The mention of binding and loosing is so important in this context because what does that actually mean? We can pontificate and say whatever we think, but contextually to the history, the contemporary people of Jesus, how they use this this, this sentence binding and loosing is a is a religious is concerning religious law. For example, when you read text written by uh, um, by those who who explain the Jewish law, for example. What's his, name? his name is Hillel, and one guy is called Shime, uh, Shimel, or Shimi, or something like that. Shimel? I can give the word. Yeah, thank you very much, Shimi. Oh, no, I'm sure that was they... wrong. Oh, okay, never mind. Shimi is a good name regardless. I love it. Uh, We're saying different so things. They mentioned... <laughs> Go on. <laughs> it's like a Shimi Shola. <laughs> shimi Shimi. They mentioned binding and loosing concerning the Jewish law, and they bind something which like, they will bind or loosen laws concerning clean or unclean. I can give a reference for that. Uh, I can just find it quickly because I looked into this earlier. Uh, so this is the place and it is called Tosefra Sota 7, uh, colon 7. So T-O-S-E-F-T-A uh, space S-O-T-A-H space 7, colon 7. Uh, there they mentioned binding and loosing concerning religious law, uh, clean and unclean things. And with that as the context and how they interpreted binding and loosing back in the day in Jesus' time, it would be understood similarly when Jesus said that to Peter. Therefore, Peter, he can bind and loosen things for the believers, according to Catholics. They will bind and loosen. So whatever a, a believer would believe in back in the day or in the Catholic perspective, they would believe what Peter bound, he binded upon the believers. And if the Catholics never fell from, never fell from, uh, from uh, what you call it, from the faith, and they continued steadfastly in this apostolic succession, so someone succeeded Peter, and and received the keys, so on and so forth, up until Pope Francis today. If that doesn't have any uh, fail, that will mean that the Catholic CCC, the Catholic Catechism of the Church. That would be binding upon all believers, binding upon all Catholics, due to Jesus telling Peter, you have the key to bind and loose. So that's very important for the Catholic argument. Yeah, Chris. Oh, he's on the phone. Of course he is. Hey, um, Catholics and Orthodox. Um, that's the Holy is... Spirit, by the way, that Chris is on the phone. <laughs> there is someone. Uh down there in chat, and I, I looked into it a little bit yesterday, but uh, the tagline says, if you want to know how to find God, ask the cops and Google Lady of Zytun. 
So it was interesting. So I actually looked it up yesterday, and I've lost it now, but if any of you guys, because you seem pretty on the ball, have you heard of the Lady of Zaytun? Apparently, in like the, what, the from 1940s to 70s in Egypt, around Cairo, I think, there was like certain reported sightings of like Mary, like glowing in like angelic type form. And even the Vatican sent groups to investigate this thing. Um, anyway, without Chris to yell and scream, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Or have you heard anything about that? And what are your thoughts? I've heard about it. I don't base my faith on it, but I've heard about it. What do you think? Good, bad, and different? Uh, I'm kind of indifferent on it, not going to lie. It's part of my Coptic tradition, but I'm not pulling any weight on it. Man, I'm just throwing out gold and no one's biting. All right, Steph. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, what do you want me to do about it? I don't know. <laughs> Talk about your wool farm or something with your rabbit fur. I don't know. Oh, one of our rabbits just died. So that was Aww. quite insensitive of you to say. Well, I'm, I mean, I was really about to say, are you going to turn just, it into a stew? Which I guess would have been really bad. So I'm not going to say that. No, no. Not for eating. I just came to say one thing. It's bad. That's it. Noted. Well done, Lou. Yeah, uh, Nate, if, if you want to know more about it, uh, Jimmy Aiken done done an investigation on that one. Uh, he has he has a full podcast or on YouTube as well. So Jimmy Aiken, uh, he's got a podcast on that one. What was his conclusion? Oh, he's got an hour or so um, um like investigation and and uh, like searching every side if it's true if it's you know and uh, and according to the because it was the first the Muslims who who confirmed that and they even threw stones because they thought it was some you know some first they thought it was a woman come down it was a woman and calling to her come down because maybe she was traumatized and something like that and then yeah he goes through this history you know and 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 see to find you know if it's true or not and uh, yeah you might find it fascinating to listen to it interesting and it wasn't only one day it was like uh, it was a couple of days and then it was like i think it was for four years Edo, was it for four years appearing no, I'm then. actually not that much aware of the story. I know it's more yeah, than yeah. one day, like you said. It's happened a lot of days, and a lot of Muslims converted to Christianity because of it. Uh, yeah, but I so, haven't looked into it. And it wasn't one off. No, definitely not. Chris, I see your mic is off. Was that an accident, or are you trying to speak? Or is this one of the things where we can't hear you? Why well, I, I don't see you're muted, but we don't hear anything. So if you're trying to say something. Lou, are you off work today? Oh my lord! No, it sounds like you're. It sounds like the opposite of work. It sounds like you're on overtime. Yeah, no idea what you're saying. Well, Steph, my condolences for your uh, for your rabbit friend. Yeah, thank you. Are you legit crying right now? No. It was kind of sad, though. I mean, I, we, she she got loose in the basement, and I think that she got into something she shouldn't have gotten into. Oh. So there one rabbit remains. My daughter was very, 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 very sad. But, you know, that's how it goes. If you're really crying, I was going to feel bad. Oh, I should have kept up the act, because that would have been kind of a nice present. Oh, I just, would, I just would have left. I, I don't handle that well. <laughs> left? <laughs> Run. Crying women. Ah! <laughs> My poor rabbit. I still have one rabbit, so it's okay. Only one? That's not going to give you enough wool for the winter. Oh, yes, it will. There, two oh. was too much wool. <laughs> we only got two, so they weren't lonely. So now the one is going through grief, but she'll still make good wool. Just get her a carrot or something to make her happy. We locked the cat down with her, so that's probably good enough. You locked a cat with the rabbit? Yeah, because the rabbit is way what bigger. What could go wrong? Cat. It's fine. The, the cat's scared of the rabbit. And when you, you say locked, though. you mean like you just threw them down in the basement and like locked them in like a whole area? Or like well, there's a cat together? door, but the, the cat won't come up because he hates the new dog. We got a puppy who's now eight months old, 
and uh, the cat will not come up. So the cat and the rabbit have each other for company down there. The cat is free to come up. He just won't. <laughs> and, and so I, I wasn't clear. So so you have a rabbit like running around like just in your whole basement? No, no, no. No, that's how the first one died. Uh, they're They're in a cage. <laughs> The first one escaped okay. and got into something, but no, she's okay. she's in a cage. She has her fresh hay, she has her toys, and she has the cat for company. She's hopefully okay. Did it get into your cistern? You know, she could hey, have. I... The cistern is just full of coal, though. I don't think coal would have killed her. Coal hey, in your research. Correct. In your research, uh, um, why did the tally bring salvation according to that person? According to what you found out here. Why did the what? The tallies or whatever that was. The, the image or whatever. No, uh, no one knows what you're saying. Why did some, something bring salvation? Yeah, that image of Mary. Oh. So why did all the Muslims convert when they saw it? I guess because they thought they saw an angel or something. Or a, glow, or a glowing woman like flying in the air and they're like, oh my gosh, we should have let women drive sooner. Uh, my husband laughed. He thought that was very funny, but I was muted. I blew, I blew air out of my nose. That was a good one. But uh, Nate, I like your song, man. It's uh, well done, well made. Is it you singing? Uh, yes. That's actually very good, man. You have a good uh, voice. Oh, well, thank you. The man has a face for radio. <laughs> I got that joke. I bet no one else did. Chris hath never seen this face because he keeps promising to come to where I live and uh, and hang out, but he hath not done so. I have been busy. V Thy people make time for thy things they want to make time for. Listen, St. Worf moves for no man. <laughs> I really thought today would be more active. This may be, this may be the, the icon that gets me to switch to orthodoxy. You know, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's that good. If there can be like a whole series of fifth century icons that could go with the entire cast of Star Trek Next Generation, that's where I would flip. Chris, is it possible, or if it if it were possible, could you be like like could you could you coexist in like um, a, a place like I don't know Russia, where like you know Orthodoxy is like the official religion, um, like Russian Orthodox? Could, could you? find a way that your soul would be content and you would feel right with your Lord and Savior um, and also be a part of like an Orthodox or Catholic church. Um, hang on, that's not exactly what I want to ask. I, I'm trying to say like how people sometimes say, what's the minimum standard for salvation? And we try to like go all the way back to like things we would never actively encourage people because it's like so, so, so bare bones. Um, could you be a Catholic or an Orthodox person Believing the most bare bone stuff and still consider yourself saved? And what would that look like? Are you talking and about if you, me or like is there a – are there Anyone, out but there? Spe uh, specifically you, but anyone. I mean, look, there's people in – Okay, you. Sitting you, in all kinds of places that can be a Christian. Like it's not a – that's not but, a limitation. But not, but well, like, well, but yeah, not, not like just sitting there being like I secretly disagree with all of your teachings. Haha, but I'm saved. I know Jesus. But I mean like legit be like, yes. I am happy to announce I am a Catholic person, um, but I'm also, you know, saved according to your Calvinism. I mean, like, look, some pew sitter that has never, you know, heard a, a stitch of Catholic doctrine and just goes to church and is repenting and believing in Jesus, like, that person has got 
a lot more likelihood that they're really a Christian than your average Catholic apologist. I will say that. Yikes. C- cover your ears, Albanian. <laughs> so, so, you know, like somebody who doesn't know anything about Catholic or Orthodox doctrine, liturgy, anything, and is just sitting in a pew and is genuinely like repenting and believing in Jesus. Like again, they're going to have much, a much more likely chance that they're a true believer than somebody who is like a, you know, a priest or a Catholic apologist. I just pray for you, Chris, because you seem very ignorant. Like those people you say, they're, they're going to heaven, but you are very ignorant. Either you're doing it in purpose. No, their ignorance is what's going to be their, their asset. No, no, no. Because I I li- literally, you're, literally you're ignorant. Literally. You are. I, I, messed, I, I messed up my question. Uh, let's try this. Chris, h- how much of Catholicism or Orthodoxy, of their, of their teachings, do you think you could affirm? Until you're like, okay, if I affirm one more doctrine, I can no longer call myself saved. Well, it's not like a, it's not like a cornucopia of doctrines. I mean, they just have a false gospel. I mean, like that's the that's the problem. How much right? of their false gospel can you embrace? Zero percent. Your... <laughs> like, Nate, I mean, can I answer? Like, like literally, Paul says, Peter. if someone teaches you Peter or an angel Paul. of heaven teaches yeah, you'll you go next, a you know. different gospel, let them be cursed. I mean, like, you know, that's, well, like that's if they the say, deal. G- it, like if they say Jesus died for your sins, you're like, okay, yes. And then if they're like, but what that really means is, and you're like, oh no, 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 no. Okay, Ido, yeah, you wanted to say something. I'm just saying like what you're saying, Nate. We believe Jesus is God, so there are certain things we have in common. So just narrowing in your question, basically. And can I say something? Uh, next, if you sub out the word Catholic and put literally anything that's not Calvinist in there, Chris will give you a very similar answer. To be fair. Did you swipe left, Chris? Or did serendipity try to I did. I'm just, I'm trying to (laughs) type on my computer and answer an email and answer you. But, I mean, like, let's say I had to move to Russia for some reason. I don't know. Like, I'm Putin's new IT guy. Um, Yeah, totally hypothetical. Totally totally not really happening. I do not want to be Putin's IT guy because, like, if I didn't fix his computer, I'm going to get poisoned by uranium the next day. So, no thanks. Um, And so... Um, there's a vibrant evangelical culture in uh, Russia. There's tons of like really cool preachers that go to Russia all the time. And there's a, these amazing churches that are just filled with evangelical believers. So, I mean, there's, there's genuinely a lot of stuff going on in every country of the world. There's not a country in the world. I wouldn't be able to find a non-Catholic, non-Orthodox church that I could worship at. There's tons of them. Even in Utah, if I went to Utah and in the Mormon land, there's tons of churches in Utah that are still good. Well, I'm, I, I mean, we have some like Russian friends here. I'm not a Russian agent, but we have some uh, Russian friends here and like they, they're, they're very evangelical. And, um, they, but they say that, uh, you know, in Russia, it, yeah, it is, as you say, there, there are some, some things like that. Uh, but it's kind of looked skeptically at, like the government's kind of like watching it with like a really kind of close eye because they consider it like too Western or too Americanized. So, well, you know, yeah, because the Russians be have a state day. church. I mean, the Russians have the, the Russian Orthodox church as their state church. So any other church, they're going to be like, nah, we're going to harass you guys. I mean, it's the same thing in China. There's official state churches that work under the, whatever it is, the four, fourfold act or some, I don't remember, like it's some kind of patriotic thing. Um, but then there's like the house churches and those are the ones that they toss in jail all the time. I would just go find myself a house church in China, you know, like it's fine. Yeah. Nick, can I say something? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would agree. Uh, we have different Bible from uh, uh, Calvinists, of course. I mean, the interpretation of the Bible itself, but Calvinists have totally different Bible from all the Christians because Calvinism, uh, I don't know how they dare to touch when they believe in the extraordinary uh, things that are not in a Bible, like total depravity and other, other nonsensical things. And then they come. I mean, what, what, what the. You say that I am ignorant can, can I and you know. Can nothing. I finish? I can taught I finish? You Catholic doctrine. Can I finish? One second. No, you didn't teach me anything. Let me speak for myself. So, I did th- this, teach is, this is doctrine. the thing. This yeah, is just, the just thing. Let, that him, I know. let him finish. This is good. This is what we want. Grab your popcorn. Thank you. This is, this is, this is when you know people are not 
people are ignorant, they're not interested because literally, uh, since I've been with Chris, he never asked me a question. He just attacks. Uh, he goes back to church history, assume he knows the history, which the people better than Chris who becoming Catholic, like pastors and other things, literally they know, uh, uh, you know, I can, you know, literally give you 500 pastors who became Catholic. Anyway, that's that's not my saying. But the thing is, between between Christians, between Protestants, like the, the difference is between like who is who is going to be baptized. That doctrine hasn't started from hasn't uh, changed from first century in in the Catholic Church. Baptism is 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 required for salvation. Uh, but uh, you 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 differentiate outside the church. Yeah. Well. Uh, we, with some agree, with some we just don't agree, but we don't call them call them non non Christian until you call God devil, which he creates, which sends people to hell, and uh, we don't go there. That's 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 from or that's calling God devil is is a bad thing. So that one, uh, you can say anything, anything like Luther himself, he he venerated Mary, uh, or he he done things that new new like Calvinists are not doing it now. They're refusing to do what Luther done, and he was the first to reform, try to reform the church. So I don't know why we called the <laughs> worse than Calvinists. Anyway, so Chris. I mean, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to respond to. Dude, I've been trying for an hour just to get people to say pretty much anything. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, how do I you mean, know Albanian is wrong? He's moving his lips. Damn. See, okay. you, you just you just want to intimidate. So you have no answer. You just intimidation, just like Muslims. Intimidate, belittle you, put you down. You look your voice like this. You look like this. Why don't you speak, man? Just speak. You want to speak historically? Speak historically. I told you. But no, yeah, you, you says, instead attack me. Someone says Nate enjoys the drama. I try so hard to avoid it. And this time I figured, heck, I'll just embrace it. Except now it's hard to get any. Right? No, I mean, look, here's the thing, like, um, the doctrines of grace are just Pauline theology. Salvation by faith alone, by grace alone, through Christ alone is Pauline theology. It agrees with Jesus. Jesus himself taught the doctrines of grace and John chapter six. I mean, these things are all biblical. Um, please find me the assumption of Mary in the scripture. Go ahead, I'll wait right here. So can we go in your in your doctrine one by one? Don't assume they're in the Bible. So give me one doctrine which you mention which is in the Bible. You assume to be in the Bible. Give me one interpretation. Don't give me ten and then run away to Mary. That's your scapegoat. Give me give me one of them and let's see if if it holds so, water. Uh, something like total inability is yeah. Something like total inability is there in Scripture. Jesus says, no. "You cannot come to me." Lest what I does that mean? You. That is total what does that mean? I mean, you can you don't have to agree with it. What? Uh, you, yeah. So, are you gonna badger me, or are you gonna let me finish? Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you asked. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, look. All of the doctrines of grace are taught throughout scripture, the first one being original sin. So Augustine himself, a doctor of the church, that's not a doctrine of grace. This doctrine, Nimrod, yet uh, is original sin is not a doctrine of grace. Total inability. Uh, that's not synonymous with original sin. Total in Oh my gosh. Please. Anyone can Google that right now. Yeah. Original sin versus total if inability. If you know anything about the doctrines of grace, then yeah. you would know if if you would if you knew anything about the doctrines of grace, which you pretend to, I mean, everybody just Google. You, you can you can tell who just said the true thing. Sin. Go ahead, everybody's got Google. I don't need to argue with a lunatic. Uh, sure, yeah. yeah I thought you were no, gonna let me answer you for your first point you are before. The so here is. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, I thought you were gonna let me answer the first my point. point before I got interrupted by the gaggle of heretics. <laughs> Oh. To the second one. Okay. You move to the you. second one. That is much Already. more worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, listen, gaggle of heretics. Chris, total for someone who demands precision, Everyone right? You, you demand precision, okay? And then you say that original sin is synonymous with total inability. That's the opposite of precision. 
I didn't say it was synonymous with total inability. You're putting words in my mouth. Would you care I to said correct the basis what you for said? Total inability is oh, original sin. okay, it is that's not synonymous. They are two different that's doctrines. That's not what you said. But the but basis for total inability is all right. I'm glad you fixed it. Original sin. You. So if you would let me finish. Yes, I didn't fix anything with your rhetoric nonsense. Like, I mean, golly. Okay, so now that we have that, so yourself. hold on, hold on. Um, so the I mean, basis you for original sin. You've got to be the queen of the heretics. You've yes, got I know. to defend that, that heresy. Right. Yeah. Because hold on. That is... hold on. So the basis for original sin <laughs> is, the basis for total inability is original sin. I would now like Albanian to say in one sentence what the basis for um uh, uh, for the sinless perfection of Mary is. Because what you'll find is he will do exactly the same thing. Calvinism and Catholicism has, have exactly the same systematic. That is such nonsense. Anyway, he can so do exact, I don't know if you're running you're, the room. I don't think so. Look, but, Chris, what you're trying to do is right, show so him no, that Calvinism but, but again, is more I can clear. Show everything I'm not going to yell. And have over and over and over Mate. again showed everything exegetically instead of some weird cope. Okay. Right. I mean, so so Chris and Albanian, that, what, happened again, to, what happened to Albanian? I have, He's still here. But listen, here's the thing, right? Is, is, is I have I know, the queen of the more has to faith take up in the Chris. I have more faith in Chris than this. So what Chris is trying to argue right now is that if you can't find something directly in the Bible, then it's not true. But then he's going to the doctrines of grace and defending where you can find them in the Bible through a couple of layers, which the Catholic can also do. So, Chris, I'm asking you to take a no, different track no with layers. your argument. They're expressly written out. You there just no said layers. the basis no, of oh, total is inability is no. original <laughs> sin. So, again, your lack of right. precision is causing you to lose to this debate. But, you're, again, you're trying to use ridiculous, silly, stupid rhetoric to cover then your refute it. You just don't refute it. I don't have to cover anything. Just theology. refute it. Calm no, down. Put your tampon back in and refute it. That there's a bunch of nonsense. Like, if you would stop interrupting me, we could have a calm conversation. But instead, what you're trying to do is you're trying to dominate the conversation with a bunch of rhetoric that isn't true. Chris, and so, what I said to you is you're making is, the same argument he's if making. Going to talk you're about making what the, doctrines the same argument grace, he's making. The doctrines of grace are going to be right in the scripture. We can go through so John is Marian chapter doctrine. 6 and show how Jesus teaches all of the John chapter 6. Um, we can go through the book of Romans and show how total inability is found in the book of Romans. Total inability is found in Psalm 14. Total inability is found throughout the scripture. This is not hard to do. The problem so why is, is, is God the calling us? Opponents of if, Christ. Why the is God calling us? of Christ want to silence the scripture in order to put forth false doctrine. This is the problem. Uh, what so why is, why is God calling us if we totally uh, enable to answer him? Why, is he joking with us? Why is he calling us? Well, as as a newly elected Calvinist, no, I would say called... to totally just use your free will to choose to follow God who is drawing uh, drawing you. So express your free will to follow Jesus. Exactly. Still so he gave, Calvinist... like like uh, Augustine says in his City of God book, he says God gave all his creatures the ability to respond to him. So he gave all his creatures everything that they need to answer him, either yes or no, but the, the very, very, very church father that you uh, that you claim to be a Calvinist is not, but uh, he says everything he's created, he created perfect and gave them, gave them everything that they need, the same. He didn't discriminate between you and me, Chris, but he gave both of us. You didn't it, I'm accepting it. That's the problem. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to anything, who who is God drawing. Like, no is, is, yeah, I think it comes down to you know who right. who no one can come to the Father unless or, you know unless God is drawing all all. Oh. Like yeah, right. Well, hang on. But you don't find that in no one, You find that is he my has the mic life. working? I was trying to say like no one can yeah. come to the, no one can come to God unless the Spirit draws them. But who is the Spirit drawing? Does that mean every single thing? Well, no. People, things with souls, presumably. 
Uh, so, so all humans, does that mean God is drawing everyone? Or does that mean uh, God is drawing um, only a small select or elect few? I, I mean, for me, I believe that net is far and wide and people can resist. For Chris's standpoint, I think he would say, no, he's only drawing a select few, and those select few uh, will not resist. There's and no answer would, there. I just pointed out where the know, problem is. And again, I, I can show, I can point out all of the scripture. We could go through a full exegesis of John chapter six, um, you know, and and do that. And we have. And the problem is, is that, uh, um, you know, Arminians can't get through two verses of John chapter six without exploding. It's amazing. It's, it's like, we call it, we call it the 11 verse yet. challenge. So okay. you can tell I mean, when you Chris do a room, maybe, maybe when you start Monday, back. Maybe Monday we can do a room where we can go through John chapter 6 together. That might be a good day. Who are you asking? John 6, the, yeah, that's that's the, a good that's a good word. That, that, yeah, that, that's a good Bible God. because unless you eat my flesh and smell that you don't have life in you, that would be Albanian, good. Albanian, you hadn't even read John 6 until like a year ago, so like seriously. Yeah, I know. I, I just became a Christian two days ago, so what is your problem? And I know more than you. So what that's the problem. Two days ago? Yeah, I became a Christian two days ago. Two days Chris. ago? What? Yeah, according to Chris, yes. Oh, oh. Well, wait, yeah. according to Chris, you're not, right? I know, he likes to do this. Uh, he, he, you could hear how, he's, how he talks to sisters. You know? I mean, the he hilarious does, bit is that we had a full four-hour conversation with a whole bunch of Arminians. Right? It was calm. It was respectful. It was very productive, and, you know, and it was because people weren't just, you know, spouting rhetoric. We were going through verses. It was very, very good. Um, we had Crimson Knight, and we had Big G, and we had a bunch of other people. I think the problem is is that when you get the Queen of Heretics on stage, she's just going to keep throwing grenades to make sure that nobody can answer oh, questions Lord. properly. Yeah, so what I did was I was listening to an argument between two people that I think are both incorrect, uh, and I pointed out that you are trying to refute him using the same method that you are accusing him of. I took a stance on nothing. Yeah, no, and and the, the whole thing is that whatever you were trying to do is just dumb because you don't even understand either of the arguments. So. Bingo, did someone just see my list? I just got bingo, let's see. You don't know the Bible, <laughs> you, made you a haven't bingo read list. X book, you're stupid and uneducated, you worship Satan, you're a heretic, or you have a mistranslation. So I think we hit five green. in a row there. Hang on, hang on. Let's, let's try to parse through this, Chris. Um, the, the, the accusation was leveled that she is dumb. Um, could, could you just say... But why specifically that she's is. She's not dumb. And she's then, saying well, dumb well, stuff. Well, okay, well, what was the dumb stuff? Like, can you point to it? So if She's if chosen, attempting then... to draw a parallel between the cope that the papists use in order to instantiate nonsense doctrines with how Paul and Jesus teach the doctrines of grace clearly through the scripture, not through implication, but clearly through the scripture, they teach the doctrines of grace. So Paul and Jesus do not disagree at any time on anything. And when the doctrines of grace are laid out in the scripture, in John chapter six, in Romans, in Galatians, in, oh my gosh, everywhere, Ephesians, Colossians, like all of these places that we see the doctrines of grace, Peter, first, first and second Peter, um, you know, these things are clear uh, intentions of the apostolic writers and yet I'm being accused that I use the same twisting of scripture that Catholics do. And this is why I say Steph is the unrepentant queen of the heretics. Yet you cannot find an apostolic father that you quote. You of find course you can. And I don't you. care what the fathers wrote because they're a bunch of ignorant rednecks. No, no, no. You, you just quoted the them like they agree with you. Do not yeah. quote no, them. Church fathers, church, saying church, church fathers are ignor ignorant rednecks again. Yes. Like How are they rednecks? Like, like the, like the, they just, just live in, they just live in squalor out in the middle of nowhere and they're yeah, like the, like all the kinds mid, of crazy stuff, man. Like, like the like, mid yeah. near East equivalent of rednecks. Yeah, pretty much. You're just diff uh, desperate to find a church follower that agrees with you. No, uh, so the difference is, the difference is like that is what you do. You. Projection is not just for movie theaters. I don't care what you, you the church just, fathers say. No, but you, you just only care what them. the church fathers say you when just it refer, up your doctor. You just referred to them. You just referred right now to them. Did you notice it or no? 
you just refer to them. They agree with you, you said, right? Or I'm, uh, I'm no, no, you said, find people. me a church father that agrees. And I said, I don't care what the church, fa let's just recapitulate. I said, I don't care what the church fathers say. I have scripture. I need to worry about the church fathers. You are the one who has to to. It is not found. Chris, I think the Lord may be uh, messing with your mic because you're cutting out really big. Uh, so in, in the meantime, let's hear, what, let's hear what Mr. Bill has to say while Chris, oh, Chris. Uh, gets a better signal. Mr. Bill, what's up? Hey, Alboni, when the church fathers disagree, who do you go to next? You go to scriptures or your church fathers? No, no, we go to both. We go to Magisterium. But they we go to Magister. We see the church fathers what they agreed in first two hundred years or even first century. They what they agreed. They there is no. Can I can can I say something? Uh, so there is no there is no new things coming up. What they gave us. What what is that uh, doctrine of faith that they gave us? Either by word of mouth or by scripture, the 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 church contains it. It's not something new. Like when Arian heresy came up in 300, everyone was neutral, believing the same thing. But when Arian called for called Pope to to gather a council about him and to to make doctrine that Jesus is not God, and 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 the Pope and the Pope called the council up, and then they said, no, Jesus is God, the Son of God, and so on, and and he was booted out and called the heretic. So he was booted out from the church because we held the keys right. to excommunicate. Right, that's not what happened because you don't know anything. Uh, you know everything. The of Nicaea was um, called. Athanasius persuaded everyone to move away from Arianism, which was incredibly popular. Um, and then Athanasius was excommunicated and thrown out of his country. By whom? And, oh, wait, and, the Bishop of Rome, Liberius, and, who was an and, Arian bishop. And, and then for 20 years, and does we that had, justify, for 20 does that years, justify we had, you, Chris? For does 20 that justify years, you? Does that justify 20 communism? years, Albanian, please shut up. For 20 years, we had Athanasius Contramundum. He stood against the church and against the Bishop of Rome by and himself so what's your point? in so exile. What's your point? So, so my point? point is that you have this sanitized, ridiculous, ahistorical view of church history that you don't know anything about church but history. Do, do so you remember you that stop Athanasius talking came, about back, it. came back and he, he, he confirmed, he came under the authority of the, the of Bishop of Rome again, and he, he was reinstituted the bishop at, by was, the end of his life. Was so, Liberius and, and he And he recognized, one second, let me finish like you now. And he recognized recognize the authority of the Pope. That's why he left. That's why he, he, he done what he done. Unlike Calvin, Calvin, he done what he done because of the authority of the Pope. And he recognized the authority. It, the, the, the authority of the Pope wasn't disputed. It was disputed what they had among them themselves. So the Again, Pope didn't know everything, of course. Listen, 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 let me finish. I know you don't like okay. when I defend myself, no, but let me defend, let, let me finish. You are spewing, you are, you are just spewing, you are just spewing like, Nate, can I speak, Nate? No. Because he's just uh, yes, spewing answer like. This answer this question, Albanian. Have you ever read a book? No, no, I never read a book. No. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go yeah. ahead. That's what I thought. Thank uh, you. Go ahead, F finish, Albanian. Okay, let me let me take you a picture. Uh, at least I read a book. Let me take a picture and I'll put on my PTR of my book. Let me go to my bedroom now. Luckily, I'm home, so I can paste that. The Bible. Um, no, 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 no. This is a church I, I history. Tried. Where is <laughs> where is uh, where? Yeah, I've got the, I've got the Bible. I've got a few Bibles here and my. But this is literally this is what I read. And that's why I know some popes were heretics. So, um, one second. Just to prove, Chris, um, that I never read anything. I mean, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and take you at your word that you have in your lifetime read a book. I, I believe you. <laughs> a book. <laughs> okay, so now this one, Chris, you better read this one. This is a quite large book. Uh, you can see my PTR now. Is a quite large book, and it tells you the history of the popes. 
and uh, by Michael J. Walsh. So this is the book which I read on the Pops. And I've got other as well from FJ, um, uh, Fulton Sheen, J. Sheen and so on. So, but anyway, I, I don't need to prove anything. He left to you. and you, so you did just... Nate. They, they left serendipity with the, with the, the trophy here for, you know, having to handle this. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I do my research. I don't just believe out of blue. And if, if I leave, if I leave, uh, well, I, I don't know where should I go, but uh, uh, unless I, I become a Coptic Orthodox. But I, even if I leave, I don't know where to go. Should I become a Calvinist? And if any one of you would refer me to a church, I, it might be not my local church. So, uh, or in Albania. So, I mean, yeah, we cannot like, but if I said to you go to a Catholic church, it might be 50 yards away from you. So this is why I know. And then, and then to go to the, to go to the church, what the church has done, let me, let me read this for, for you. Well, some, somebody maybe read it if they're interested. is in my Discord, Discord app, uh, what the church has done until now. Um, sorry, taking a bit. But um, so statistics about 2024. Uh, the Catholic Church population worldwide is increased from 1358 billion to 1375 billion. That's not the problem. It's just statistics. The content in fact in Africa experienced the biggest increase with 8.3 million embracing the Catholic faith. The total number of bishops in the world decreased by 23 units to 5,340. Worldwide, the number of priests dropped by 2,347. Europe experienced the largest decline. Well, I guess why. Africa has an increase of 1,518 priests. So in Africa is, is booming. So then you go to uh, Nigeria list, percentage Nigerian Catholics to attend uh, mass weekly is 94%. So in Nigeria, 94% and they're most discriminated, discriminated by Boko Haram. And then you go to Africa had an increase of 205 men religious and 2,700 uh, 2,275 female religious. And then you go, Africa experienced an increase of 205 major seminaries and 2,053 minor seminaries. In education, the Catholic Church has 74,000 kindergartens, 10,567 nursery schools, 101,000 primary schools and 50,000 secondary schools serving the need of over 65 million children in the world. In healthcare, the Catholic Church operates 5,405 hospitals, 14,205 dis dis uh, dispensaries, 567 leper hospitals, 15,276 homes for the elderly, 9,703 orphanages, 10,000 604 marriage counseling centers, 3,287 social rehabilitation centers, and last one, 35,529 other kinds of institutes. So, I mean, should we throw all, 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 all those things away because Calvinists are against the Catholic Church? I don't know. I mean, Catholicism does 51% of global charity. That is... 51% by themselves. Again, you could go look up that statistic. That was for 2022. That is matching, you know, people on the other side of that 49% are like every wealthy person you can think of, government organizations and agencies. Uh, the Catholic Church has great, great fruit, right? Like, I don't think anyone could contest that. If you live in New York State, I think God doesn't health. contest it. Yeah, I don't think God can test it either. If you live in New York State and you have free health care, it's the Catholics. That's who's responsible for your health care, just so you all know. And and guess why the Calvinists have problem with the Pope saying we should invite everyone in the church. So we're not going to bless sin. They mock us about that. It's okay. You know, we used to be mocked. But what the church is doing, it, it's not the Pope, it's, it's the, the, the people who, um, you know, in, in the council. So 
they say we're not going to like uh, treat like criminals, the gay and lesbians people. We're going to bless them as individuals. We're not going to bless the sin. We're going to bless the sinner because we we're all sinners after all. We all get blessed in the church. So this is why when they say, oh, we don't accept gays in in our church. Well, guess what? Even Saudi Arabia has gays, but because the law is against them, they cannot come in surface. Make uh, make make it legal and see how many uh, Saudi uh, they will become gay and lesbians. But because you hold, yeah. So no, we invite everyone. And and I, I watch so many videos where people are living for 20, 30, 40 years uh, in chastity. I mean, they don't want to get married because they have same sex attractions, but they know the importance to stay just, chaste and to give their life to God. So give something to God, which you, you, you love the most. So you, you, you give, you know, and you stay chaste. So, yeah, and these people mock us for this. They don't understand. All the Pope is, is, is going to get gays married. Yeah, they don't know any better. They're just speaking out of ignorance. Hey, Ido, I'm eating dates right now. Mohammed told me to eat seven oh, dates. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mashallah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mohammed, yeah, yeah. Hamdi. Hamdi. They, they got source of fever, brother, and they eat, he says, eat it, and then Allah. <laughs> By the blessings of Allah, you will never be sick. I'll go the under the train, you. and I never get killed. Hey, Albani, how come your yes. Pope didn't tell the homosexual community? He's, he's called Albania. His name is uh, Albania. Whatever. I don't care. It's okay, bro. It's okay. I don't care. Okay, I come here. Well, I come here. Even hear but this. In, instead of instead of giving come, uh, him a name that is disrespectful, he, can you just say I don't like okay. you and then ask your question? It's okay, bro. Just state Ido, your purpose. Ido. I don't like you and then state your question. Can I speak? You can speak, but please okay. be clear. How come your pope didn't tell the homosexual community to repent and trust their faith in Jesus? So you do, do, you tell, do, do you tell? What, do you tell? Do you tell? Do you tell? Sorry, can I ask you back? Do you tell? No, 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 no. Answer my sorry, question. Don't, ask, don't answer my question with another question. No, no, no. According to you, do you tell every sinner out there in the street to repent and come to Jesus? Yes, if they're homosexual, they're homosexuals living a life. No, no, every yeah. sinner. I mean, you are a homosexual in a way because you worship hold some on, other hold on. God. Better I'm a homosexual Wait a in a way. Wait a minute. I got here just in time. Wait a minute. There's a better I'm a answer. Homosexual. Hey, Mr. Bill. I'm a homosexual. Hey, Mr. Bill. Yes, you did. Yes. Hey, Mr. Bill. Um, yes. th he did. Can the you show me? The doc, yeah. Do you want to? So, if you go to the Vatican website, they have the original document that they produce, and they said blatantly, homosexuality is a sin not condoned by the church. Repent. Like that's literally what but, it says. In but he's going to bless the homosexual community. No, they're not. So, so, so oh, my, no. uh, I, I mean, I guess my take, since I guess I should give it at some point. <laughs> why not? Um, I, I mean, reading that thing, and. It just seems like you're trying to have your cake and eat it, too. Like, it's so, so, like, trying to please everyone, uh, which usually does the opposite. So it, it does say, uh, for the people that say it's an individual blessing, that is wrong. It specifically says couples, but then the people that says it's blessing homosexuality and, and, and calling it okay, technically that is not right either. So it's like walking an incredibly fine rope that I say is a giant red flag, but that's just me. Because it says we are totally allowing priests to bless homosexual couples together, but at the same time, we are not affirming homosexual lifestyle. So they're calling homosexuality a sin, but they are also blessing the couples, which just seems like it's, it's very, very milquetoast and weak. And that's why I think the church in, at large is losing power and authority among people. Um, I, I don't saying, think so. And, in, in my humble opinion, there it is. Yeah, I, I don't think so, Nate, because literally uh, if if uh, some people come to to the church, they try, they even, they probably, there's so many people who live together, man and woman together. They they don't do anything. They live chaste. Not everybody sleeps together. OK, so I, I like I, I don't stay with my mom or with my dad only because I sleep with them. God forbid. 
But the what? thing is, Nate, one second. The, the thing is, the grace that uh, the grace or the, the invitation that the church is doing is like Jesus. Jesus didn't condemn the woman. The, 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 the heretics brought the woman to him and said, she was sinning, not the man. She was sinning. And he says, he says to them, okay, throw the first stone if you, uh, who is without sin. When everybody left, Jesus forgave her. He says, go, away, go and sin no more. What about if the woman went and sinned again? Do you say, oh, Jesus forgave a, 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 a prostitute and she never repented? So are you accusing Jesus same as the Catholic Church? No, I'm saying there's a difference. I'm saying on one hand, no, it's, not a, what you it's exactly the same thing. Nate, stay with me. Please. You don't Sorry. know what I'm I about didn't... to say. You have no okay, idea what I'm about to say. Okay, go ahead. So what, what I'm about to say is you're trying to conflate two things. What you just said, I, I'm a lot closer to agreeing with, but that's not the oh, issue okay. at hand. The issue at it hand is, is the. It, I'm about to tell you what, I mean, Sorry. I, unless you okay. want to be a fortune teller and fall into your own Sorry. sin, go ahead. you go don't ahead. know what I'm going to say. So I'm trying to say that it's different. Um, it would be like, like Jesus affirming their lifestyle. So like when Jesus was hanging out with, you know, prostitutes and tax collectors, remember the Pharisees gave him a lot of trouble for that. They're like, why is he hanging out with them? Well, he was hanging out with them saying, here's eternal life. Follow me. Like repent, believe the gospel type stuff. So it wasn't to leave them in their sin. What you're, uh, it would have been very different if Jesus said, hey, tax collector, keep ripping people off. Whores keep whoring. I bless that. That would be wildly different than, oh, you made a mistake? Yes, it's very human of you. You know, follow me. Here's a better way. Come away from the sin. Those are two different things. So a lot of people are yeah. – that's the difference. As long as, as long as you don't, don't confirm the church is fine, Nate, according to, to you. But the thing is the Holy Spirit, which is in the church, is the same spirit that was in Jesus. The spirit who directs the church is inspiring the church to do that. So the same – exactly. You, you, you read my mind. I was going to say the same thing. Because Jesus did, didn't come to condemn anyone. He came to invite everyone. So literally what we're doing, we're not saying you're okay to be gay and to be lesbian. That's no, no. We cannot change marriage and we cannot do. So that's written in the very, very source that you said is, is, is written. So, yeah. So this is what the church is doing. What, he's, what the church blessing is two people coming in front of them. The priest, most of the time, he doesn't know. They're gay. Oh, we are gay. We're going to be married. Can you bless us? I don't think anyone would bless them because they're not going to bless them. Marriage is not called marriage. Hey, Nate, can, 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 I, can I get two minutes just to unload? Let me be quiet. Please, Brandon, take two minutes. Please, no one interrupt. All right. Today. All right. I just, I just want to just, you know, and this is the part where you, you got to draw your lines on where you stand. You know, as you were talking, I was thinking about the opposite. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound. And the, and, and the problem is, is very simple. Now, we have a very clear-cut case. Is it better to obey God and to love God? Is it better to obey man? Now, the scripture warns us that in the last days, people are going to be lovers of themselves, proud, bolsters, all of these various things. And it talks about men having not only pleasure in sin, but pleasure in them that do it. One of the things when it comes to those who say they love God, whatever your beliefs are, there should be a commitment to holiness. Now, nothing's holy about Jeff and, and John being married. I don't care if you call it a couple. How can a church that says they there that they are the exclusive medium vicar of Jesus Christ are doing something that is outside of what his apostles have taught? Now, this is where the rubber is meeting the doctrinal road, where either this is the true church or is it a false church? And I'm not saying they haven't done good things and they don't help people. And they are probably very good people in the Catholic Church. I believe that. But at the same time, when you have the Pope saying you can bless same sex cup, how can you bless something God has cursed? This is an abomination before God. And I know it's kind of rough preaching and I know people don't like to hear this nowadays. But the solution is is very simple. For if God is going to judge and send people to hell for this sin of immoral uh, affection, not but for the desire, but for acting on it, 
how can the church that's supposed to be the medium of salvation to put people on the street call straight, sit there and say, well, I'm going to bless you, John and Paul and Susie and, and Sally, and say, hey, y'all know y'all living in sin and y'all y'all being nasty and doing all these various things. And I, I, it, it, it just boggles my mind to even think that someone would not even say, well, you know what, I'm, I'm going to even try to... Uh, to say, well, it's, I'm going to try to justify this. And the Pope didn't mean this. I'm going to say it, the Pope is a false prophet. If he says anything outside of what God has said, that man is an anathema. I don't care how big he is, how tall he is. He is going not only against the natural created order of the world, but he is promoting sin blatantly. And I know recently, well, he's not saying marriage. I'm sorry, if you're blessing a couple, I, 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 it's like saying I'm blessing a, whether it's a straight unmarried couple staying together or, or a homosexual, man, even though one is worse than the other, I don't care what you say. Uh, it's encouraging a situation where the only thing that's going to come is an immoral lifestyle. I'm going to say this in land, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Do what? Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Well, you won't get that. You come to the Pope, he's going to give you a blessing. It's very simple. Either we're going to follow God or we're going to follow uh, the man with the pointy hat in the red shoes. God bless you. I land. I'm, my name is Brandon. I'm from Alabama. Yeah, man. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, I would agree with you if they bless the sin itself and if they, like, say, yeah, carry on with your life uh, and so on. I would uh, totally agree with you, you know. But many people, uh, they didn't read and they don't know what the church means. So when you hear their side, when you hear our side, and you might think twice because there's so many converts coming to the church and we didn't skip that past them. It's all viral. It's all out there. Even with the, with the things that went on in a sexual immorality in the church and so on. They were, and we still haven't converted. But the thing is, bro, we cannot satisfy, like sister says, everyone. Uh, you know, uh, we can. Can, can we satisfy everyone. God? Can we one satisfy second, God? One second, one second, please let me finish. I let you finish. You know, I was unmuted, but I let you finish. So, the church is the body of Christ. You cannot go outside the body of Christ. The church built the that Christ is the head. He built the church, the visible church in earth. This is where the devil is going against the devil in Revelation twelve. He's going against the 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 woman and which they follow the the the, the whole day. They hope, you know, God the Father and, and follow Jesus Christ. So they hope the testimony of, of Christ. So this is the church is attacked, of course. But what the church is doing is not confirming. You haven't seen the fruit. I mean, you, you come here and speak. OK, it's fine. But you haven't seen the fruit. Watch the videos. There are people, like, there are thousands of people who are staying chased. They came like that. They say, we weren't invited in any church. We came to the Catholic church. We were invited in. We're not thrown out. And then now for 40 years, I'm living a chaste life. Even though everyone has, like, I have sexual desires to woman or cheat my wife. Another one has desires to, to steal. But when you're in a church and the church says this is wrong, because uh, because Jesus gave the authority to the church and Hebrews, like I repeated before, thirteen seventeen, it says the church, uh, the, the um, was was the word um, guides your soul. So the church got, and they, the church will hold account for it. So it's not for me and you to judge the pope or the bishop. So it's for God to judge it. So we should put point, point our finger to ourselves first, because when we point our finger to someone else, three fingers are po pointed back to us. So remember that one. Yeah, well, no, no. See, that's the problem, my friend. You, you see, you, know, you miss the Bible tells us that they that are spiritual judges all things. Uh, and God has already judged because he's given us his word. He's already told us what he's thought about it. He's already decreed what he's thought about it. He's not asking Lottie, Dottie, Paul, or any of y'all what to think about it. He's told us what to think. And as a matter of fact, he has called all men in this last hour to repent. Now, the issue at hand is that your church is going, is, if they are the true church of Jesus Christ, they are in contradiction, treason to the king of all the universe by saying that they can bless or give uh, somewhat of moral approval to something that he has wholeheartedly condemned. Well, what they're, they're a couple. How can a church that's saying they're representing Jesus say that I'm going to give you the go ahead to say, well, this is good. And this is what we're talking about, the couple 
this is a homosexual couple. Does your church bless uh, murders? Do they have the, uh, 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 the the right to uh, bless pedophilia? Do they have the right to go we and bless, bless anything? Murders. We have priests yeah. going to we have priests well, going to, well, to prison. Me, I don't know if well, you know let, that. Let, let, let me let me let me no no I'm I'm gonna finish because because this is the thing. Well, you if you don't if you don't you're judging well, if you don't, no, no, yourself. No, no, I'm judging you. I'm gonna judge you according to what the Bible says. And see, no, this, no, this, well, no, 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 yes, I can because it's a false church. I can judge it just just like I do any other church. So you gonna let you gonna let me finish? Let me let me finish. Let me finish. No, because let him this is yeah, but he he's contradicting This is this is a this is just write it down, Albania, write it down, and then respond after. Go ahead, Brandon. The 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 issue is, and and this is this. Is, and, it, and it so vexes me, especially with this the LGBT movement and, and already with Francis's liberal leanings uh, that go on. Then he's going to go and say something like this. The issue is, are we going to follow what God said or are we going to follow it? And, and this is the very thing the apostles warned us about, that they're going to be men. They're going to creep in and they're going to uh, deceive people with these these subtle heresies. This ain't even a good deception. Nature itself teaches you that this is an abomination. How can anybody that's supposed to have the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about God's quickening power, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave. You are supposed to be the, the, the epicenter of the Holy Ghost and nothing in you tells you that, no. Nah, no, he no. I I shouldn't be blessing these two men holding hands because you know what they're doing when they get home at night, right? They're committing abominable acts. That's what they're doing. You know what those two ladies are doing? They're kissing on each other. That's what they're doing. And you're supposed to be a holy church saying that oh this is right. No, you're not a holy church. This is a false church. Real quick, um, I think that I agree with Brandon that the edict is causing unnecessary confusion and probably shouldn't have happened. Um, however, Brandon, when a Catholic uses the word bless, it's not the same way that we would use the word bless. What Albanian is trying to explain to you is that there's a command. The blessing includes, um, it's a command to go out and sin no more. It's them saying, it like, it's like the priest is being told to stand in front of the couple and say, correct this error go out and sin no more, come back and come to the Catholic faith. Now, I wish they didn't write it that way, but that's what Albania is trying to explain to you. It's not a blessing. It's not a condonement. It's not the church saying, um, we're totally fine. We're going to perform gay marriage, you know, gay weddings. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. It's them saying that gay people like murderers, like whatever other examples were given, like liars, like thieves, like all of us have a place in God's family Go out and sin no more and come back cleansed. I, I, that's that's what I understand of the idea of a Catholic blessing. It's not it's not a condoning. So they're they're telling them so can when I, they say I... bless, when they say bless, Steph, just to be clear, they're saying repent of your sins and sin no more. That's what that's, they mean when they that's say that's the way it's written. Yeah. <laughs> that's when I say that's sorry. Sorry, go ahead. I'll go ahead. I want to. I want to say something to this too. Yeah. Um. The thing is, like I said at the end, the church is blessing the murderers. They don't bless the murderers to, to um, to go and murder again. But they go in, you know, to to try and convert people's souls to save souls into the prisons everywhere. We're everywhere. We're not just one place, you know, because people don't understand. You you spoke about the church. I mean, at least we have a doctrine. We have a clear view of things in 2024. I mean, go in the churches out there. You have gay pastors. You have, I'm not saying all the Protestants are like that or Calvinists because you have a Calvinist pastor. Protestant. No, I'm not saying, okay? I'm just saying you have gay pastors. Full value saying, come on, gay people, come and worship with us. And we, we can even get you married like Church of England and others. So, bro, at least we have a view on it. And that view, we say we cannot change the the, 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 the words of the Bible. So the, we're not going to call something else which is not marriage a marriage. So that stands clear. So uh, blessing a sinner has been always. We all, I'm a sinner. When I go to, to church, I confess. They bless me. What I do at the back door, they don't know unless I confess. But even though I confess, they say sin no more, like Jesus, go and sin no more. Then it's up to me, sin or no sin. 
So that's that's between me and God, the gay people and God. Not with with the ch church is not encouraging. No, no, it's trying to invite people to 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 um, move away from that lifestyle. Uh, yeah, you have to speak to a to a to a, to a priest for that and and see um, what they say. Just and just approach a priest, bro. You know. In Brandon's defense, I mean, Brandon, I agree with everything you said, right? If my pastor said, I'm going to start performing gay weddings at this church, you I'd be don't. out of that church. I'd be like gone. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not attending a church where the pastor is doing this, right? So what the initial edict says is what Albanian is trying to describe is we cannot alienate any type of sinner from the church. And therefore, just as we would offer a blessing and a command to sin no more, that we're going to, you know, we're not going to eliminate a certain person. Um, so that's, here's what we're doing for homosexuality because it's such a big issue on the table. We are offering a blessing to these people to come into the Catholic church and stop this behavior, right? The problem, and this is why I don't think the Vatican did a great job with this, is exactly as Trinika pointed out in the chat, there are priests who have been given some authority by the church who are allowing couples to hold hands, performing this blessing, saying, saying, you know, extremely confusing things that are blessing the marriage, blessing the relationship, blessing the behavior. And the fallout of this, if you're watching Catholic news or, or observing any comments coming out of the Vatican, or I think there was a big response that just came out of um, uh, one of the African nations where Catholicism is really prevalent. It's um, going to be a split. What? Yeah, well, exactly. So what's happening is that there's a lot of response saying, hey, we can't allow the priests to just go and do what they're doing. So do we do we um, like there's the the news article that went around that Pastor Mark shared that was about the priest who was actually blessing their relationship, blessing their behavior. There was like a swift retribution out of the Vatican saying, no, no, this priest doesn't have the authority to do that. But that's what priests are doing. So the the command has caused a lot of confusion. But I think the initial thing was an idea of no longer alienating. Does that, does well, that help? I, and, I, and, I, and I hear what you're saying, Steph. And, and, I, and I appreciate the diplomat, the, you know, diplomatic approach you're taking. But the, these gentlemen are very well trained, especially with the Jesuits. And I, and I, I have uh, many conversations with Jesuit priests, smart gentlemen, very smart, very cunning, uh, I would say in many instances. It is very hard for me to believe them knowing, one, the context of what the word bless or the connotation that is taken in our modern times, how it's to be understood. And also with already the, the, the kind of things going on with some of the, I guess, unlawful uh, marriages maybe be taking place with some of the Catholics and things like that, that this was not an uh, intentional act to move the, the pendulum a little bit closer to making the, the Catholic Church a little bit more, uh, how can you say, modern. I can see that being maybe the, the ambiguity being the justification, but I, I, and, I, and I respect you being trying to be fair, Steph, but I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. I just, I just see the devil all in this. Because if the Catholic Church buys it, because when the world thinks about Christianity, even though I believe they're wrong, that they, for the most part of those who are not familiar, Muslims, they think of Catholicism. And unfortunately, if Catholicism takes these turns, then there's going to be a big pressure on a lot of others. And like, well, if the Catholic Church does it, like, you know, like they are daddy or something. Uh, so you guys need to do it. I, I just see the devil all in this trying to engineer something for the end times to make us uh, bend morally. And I just see the devil using the Pope. It, that's just me. I'll say, I'll say what, uh, uh, Brandon, what you say, I'm very positive. Uh, Albania would also say that things, the same things are wrong. He will raise the same, uh, you know, paper and say all the things with marriage and this, and the moving towards accepting homosexuality as okay in the church. That conspiracy, if that is true, Albania will go against it as well. It's not the case that the, the Catholics are secretly abiding to their theory. This is something like you both, if this ever happens, they would, they, they would, you both would agree this is wrong. It's just the way that you interpret the whole history of it and the whole situation that you think this may go into such a thing and therefore you're careful, which is understandable. But I want to say like, um, I want to kind of tie that together with what Nate, he said. What Nate, he said is that it's very, um, you can't have the cake and eat it too, basically. And I agree to that. You can't have that. But the thing is, like the document, the edict that has been that has been brought forth by the Catholic Pope, it is so specific. It is 
it is not a general saying like, okay, no, obviously, obviously homosexuals, uh, homosexuality is a sin. And then someone comes, hey, can you bless homosexuals? Well, technically, yeah, you can give them a blessing. You can ask God to give them grace. Do you see, both of these two statements are true, but the Catholics are so precise in the way they want to formulate their faith in everything. You know that when they speak of uh, transubstantiation, stuff like these words, they are so specific that you can plug out every hair in your head and they, will, they want you to plug more hairs out of your head for you to be more precise. So they are extremely precise in everything they do. So when they say you can bless, so I'll read what, a part of the text that makes the most confusion. Um, I'll read that part. Uh, let me just catch it quickly. Be because the concern is, is, is real, but it's just because they're so precise, it can make people uncomfortable. Um, so it's, it's this part, I think Nate, he referred to it. Uh, it says like this, it is precisely in this context that one can understand the possibility of blessing couples in irregular situations and same-sex couples. So that part seems wrong, right? Well, you can't do that. You can't bless people who are in, in couples, you know, say irregular situations and same-sex couples. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's something we should ban mind. This seems wrong. But then it continues, without officially validating their status or changing in any way the church perennial teachings on marriage. So the church does not change its, pre its previous stance on marriage, and it doesn't validate a, a same-sex couple. They are not validated, but they can still receive a blessing, even if they come forth as a couple. So what are the previous statements about uh, homosexuality? We can read that because these things has not been changed. So when we read the Catholic uh, Church, uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, 2,357 2, reads like this. Homosexuality refers to relations between men or between women who experience an exclusive or predominant sexual attraction towards persons of same sex. It has taking a great variety of forms through the centuries and in different cultures. Its physiolog physiological genesis remains largely unexplained, basis, uh, basing itself on sacred scripture, which uh, presents homosexuality acts as acts of grave depravity. Tradition has always declared that, quote, homosexuality acts, uh, homosexuality, wow, I can't speak, Quote, homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered, unquote. They are contrary to the natural law. They close the sexual act to the gift of life. They do not proceed from a genuine effect, effect, uh, effective and sexual complementarity. And then it says like this, under no circumstance can they be approved. So it's very clear that the edict does not approve of homosexuality, even though it is allowed to give a blessing to couples who are homosexual. So that means the blessing is not condoning and it is not touching upon the homosexuality, but it is touching upon the people who are afflicted by homosexuality. Even people who are in a couple who are afflicted by the sin of homosexuality, they can receive a blessing from God that, that does not condone or anything concerning sexuality, but just the people themselves, that they may come closer to God. And coming closer to God, that is part of repentance. So it's extremely precise, and that makes um, sense. Well, hang on, let me, let me say one thing, and then I'm gonna have to go. I guess if um, if anyone wants to keep it going, that's fine, but I'm, I'm gonna take off. Um, but I think the big thing, like I totally agree with Brandon, and the, also the thing blessing, you know, means something very dis different, like Steph pointed out, than it does to Protestants and Catholics. Um, but still, that almost goes back to, you know, disregard this issue, this issue. That's like part of the problem anyways. It's like we see just the blessing rites and rituals as unnecessary or at least vastly different than you do. So it, it conflates the things, and that right there causes confusion. So, like, that's the issue. That's one issue before we even get to the actual blessing homosexual thing. But – I just see it like Brandon, like it's brushing too close to the world. So if people want to say, well, it's like friendship evangelism, 
And, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, I go hang out with my kids, my friends at the nightclub and, you know, I don't drink, I don't cuss, I don't do bad stuff, but I just hang out with them and, you know, talk about Jesus every time I get a chance, which is none. Um, so I, I just go to the nightclub with them and, you know, they smoke and drink and get blackout drunk and, you know, start bar fights, but I just have friendship evangelism because I want them to come to Jesus. It's like, oh, well, I went to the strip club, but it's, it's friendship evangelism. There's naked people like shaking their junk in our face, but, you know, I don't watch. I, I blind my eyes. But, you know, I just want them to come to Jesus. So, you know, it's like at some point, like wanting people to come to Jesus, like you're going to be like, look, this is the way to heaven. This is the way to hell. That's just how it is. Um, like, you know, First Thessalonians 5.22 says, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil. So, and also it's like the Pope, it's no different than like a modern political uh, leader or president when they say something dumb or boneheaded. You have the press secretary out there walking back and, and massaging and like reorganizing their thoughts and being like, no, no, whenever he spoke, that's not what he meant because of the backlash. Uh, if there was no backlash, then yeah, what he said is exactly what he meant. But because of backlash, then they, the press secretary walks it back just like they did with this Vatican statement. They're like, well, well, actually, <laughs> let me clarify. What he really meant was this. And it just seems like you're getting too cozy with the world. So, you know, abstain from all appearance of evil. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.22 and like Romans, you know, 12.2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's right there in that crux where, you know, the people on Team Pope will say, but we're adhering to that because we're technically, very, very technically, not saying homosexuality is okay. We're saying it is not okay while the non-Team Pope side is saying, dude, if it's close enough to have a question, run as fast as you can the other way, preaching repentance and the gospel. Um, so um, anyway, that is my final thought. Like, even though technically you may think, well, it's okay, when you have like the LGBTPS community coming out, like bragging and thrilled and happy with the Pope over this, you guarantee <laughs> they don't think it means what you're saying it means. They can yeah, have a they, flawed under, they can have a flawed understanding. Right. But they, they can have a flawed understanding, but that's what they think it means. Um, so that is just brushing too close with the devil's shoulders, in my humble opinion. Can I can um, I ask you a question, Nate, before you go? Um, wh why would you think two people go to church to the Catholic Church? Why do I think people need to go to the Catholic Church? If they're they two do? Catholics and they have affections, why do they go to church? Do they go to receive sacraments, right? I, I mean, you could you could take two different people and get two different answers, or four different, two no, different no, 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 no. two different answers. Just 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 think 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 with me, please. So you are Catholic, you go to church, you go to church to receive the sacraments. Why else would you go to church, right? To receive the sacraments that Jesus gave us, right? Well, because the Bible says, "Let us not forsake the coming together of each other in assembly." That, that's why exactly. So, so this is why we tr like the priest trusts me to do the right thing. I cannot fool the priest because God can see me twenty four seven. So uh, even if I can fool the priest, God God judges me. He, you know, he just he's a visible visible source in on earth. You know, doing doing God's sacraments. So the, I would think like Edo because I read that as well. What Edo read that's my mindset. If I come from my mindset from Brandon or someone else who never read the Catechism, right? Uh, probably I was a bit uh, uh, ahead of myself because I know many people don't read the Catechism. So the Catechism is clear on that one. That's why I was speaking. I know what exactly uh, the Pope meant because he cannot go against the Catechism that the Church defined itself. So do you understand what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So this is why the Pope cannot cannot say like uh, we 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 going to condone everyone who is uh, gay or lesbian. But we, we... I, want, I want to say something to, uh, to Nate's analogy because I completely agree with the analogy. It, it makes a lot of sense what he says. Like you don't just go and go into the club and uh, pretend you're good with the homosexuals or, or people who are getting drunk and stuff. You don't do that. But I would also say that the analogy doesn't follow with what the Pope did. Because the Pope is not telling the priest that they have to go into the clubs and do all of these things. It is the contrary. When a couple that are actually in, a, in, in the sin of homosexuality, they have some homosexuality upon them, and they are struggling with it, if they, it's not that the priest goes to the club, but if they come to the church, is the, is the priest to reject them and say, no, you have homosexual attractions, you have to get out of here, 
I'm going to run the other way and preach a repentance. No, they don't do that. They, they, they walk to the people who walk into the church and they say, you, and they preach repentance and say, actually, I can give you a blessing that God, he may, he may help you. You know, they are coming so to what, the church. What, who that's, is running that, them that's all the first? Point of it. Well, 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 hang on, Ido. Um, I don't know if you're speaking on behalf of the Pope or if there's an official document that says that was said somewhere, because that's the way I've heard you presented a few times. I don't know if that's true or not. Would the Vatican agree with you? Is there something you can find a statement? Because it's presented as, oh, these people are struggling with homosexuality, presumably like they want to stop, uh, you know, being homosexual and stop doing homosexual acts. So it's like if, if they're like, hey, priests, we're struggling with homosexuality. You know, we, we want to repent. We want to not have this affliction upon us. Will you bless us? Sure, just like anyone else that's struggling with sin, drug addict, adultery, whatever, straight sex, it's uh, fornication. Yeah, we want to help you get out of that. So you're willing to repent? Wonderful. Is that the way it mm -hmm. is based on a factual statement? Or is it like a lot of other people assume, probably rightly, that it's like, hey, we're a homosexual couple. We have no intention of repenting. We're good with what you call sin. Um, so go ahead and bless us. We have no intention or desire to stop homosexuality. Um, and I don't think there's an official Vatican statement either way on that. So like I said earlier, does not look good. Connect, connect, connect. Hey, Nate, I, 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 will, I, will, I will answer that quickly. Albania, I'll answer that quickly. Because very simple. Not, because I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. I, I'll need to I answer very that quickly, then Brandon, then I got to go. Yeah, go ahead. But Steph can stay. Oh, wait, Queen of Heretics, are, are you and Saren Stephendipity good, or you went out of this too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Let, let, let me answer that quickly, okay? There is, yes. there is no blessing that can be upon an unrepentant person. You don't bless unrepentance. That's blessing sin. It's very simple. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what so I was going to so say. The, what, okay. Can I, can I please? Well, one well, second. So, well, hang on. Brandon was also uh, trying to get in for a few times. But you're yeah, saying but you, you that... Asked, uh, asked, you, asked, you asked me, so can I answer it? Okay, yeah. Is there an official Vatican statement? That was the question. Yes, it is, uh, because the, 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 the priest, if I go to priest and I said I cheated on my wife, uh, probably I'm going to do it again, you know, and give me a blessing or forgive me. So you cannot direct, you cannot do that. So when the priest knows you're doing it in purpose, he, he, he has the authority. Remember, when, when Jesus breathed on the disciples who says you forgive shall be forgiven, the sins you retain shall be retained. So that means that the priest will see the intention of their heart and they will say, Un unless exactly with like you said, unless you, you do something about it or, you know, so yes, okay. they, they will direct so, them to do something about it. It's not like it, they're going to keep going every week there and get the blessing. No. Okay. I, so I, if I, I was, uh, okay. So. So, so if I was the priest and then I promised Brandon could speak, <laughs> if I was the priest in these popular photos circulating around the internet, of priests blessing gay couples together standing before him like inches away from each other's faces like they're about to make out in glee while they're holding hands um if they can sense the intent of the heart i be like you know thanks god for giving me the ability to sense the true intent of their heart but i think i can probably figure this one out on my own it's so apparent the first thing i'm going to do is if you're struggling with homosexuality and you're telling me you want to stop uh before i give you a blessing the first thing i'm going to do is probably tell you to stop holding hands so I, I just – what you say and what you see seem very different. Um, so I wouldn't if believe. That, if, if, yeah, so if, if that, what you say is true, Albanian, then if, if there's any credibility to these pictures, which, you know, why wouldn't there be? I mean, no one said their lies, um, and there's plenty of them. It's, you know, happy homosexual couples holding hands, getting blessed by the priests. So I, if, I would, if two, I would two trust gay any. dudes are holding hands – yeah, if two gay dudes are holding hands, like bless me, Father, I totally want to stop this. Like, oh, I'm making out with my making out with my husband. I totally want to stop this, but bless me anyway. No, but it, yeah, but if if yeah, but I wouldn't trust any picture that is out there. So that that's not what goes in the church anyway, okay. because I I go to Don't the church. Your eyes. Definitely, that's not. Yeah, yeah, but th there are so many others, not just that one. We, okay, we Brandon. Used to it now. Yeah, yeah I, I I was gonna say, you know, like in this interest, you bring up that topic of repentance. It uh, metanoia means a change of mind uh, that is the foundation of a change of direction. If I am uh, coming in front of you with, you know, as a couple, what in that communicates that there is a change of mind about my situation or a change of direction? 
I'm not talking about a person that has desires, because I'm not saying a desire uh, for wrong is the same thing acting upon the wrong. But if I'm still driving in the same car with the same person, living in the same house, having our same lifestyle, it, our direction hadn't changed uh, for how we're living, more than likely because our mind hadn't changed. And I can say I have had, a, in our ministry, we've had a homosexual couples come in. Nobody's running them off. Uh, I, and I've, I've talked about this at, at, at length, uh, you know, my, my own sister, uh, who I love dearly. Uh, that, you know, that, that's my baby. I love my little sister. And uh, I'm not going to throw away my sister. Uh, but I've, I've had to let my sister know plenty of times, I, my baby, I love you. I will give you everything I got. Uh, but one thing I can't do is compromise this word for you. Uh, there is a way called straight. And uh, it's one of those things. Her, her, her at the time she was married, her and the young lady has gotten a divorce. Uh, they come over like, well, can such and such? Yeah, y'all come over because you're human beings. I'm not advocating mistreating people. Come over to my house. Even they had their children. That was a part of the marriage. We bought the children Christmas presents because the children had nothing to do with that. They're human beings and God loves them also. But even when they came to our Bible studies and when the topic came, we didn't avoid the topic. But I always made sure to let them know this because I disagree with how you live. And I want you to know I love you with the love of God and that God is able to change you uh, or better yet, give you the strength to make the right decision. But because I love my sister and because I believe hell is a real place. I'm not going to sit there and pretend that, OK, just because you come and play in church, that everything's going to be OK at the end of the day. No, baby, you got to come out your sin. It is just that simple. And it's hard for me to believe uh, that if we really believe that there's a place called hell and we really love people the way that we say that we do. Sometimes if we love people, uh, loving people calls us to tell them the truth in love. And I'm not even going to give my sister the impression that she's any way near right uh, for something that can cause her to be lost because I love her. So for me, I, I, maybe that's maybe that's why I'm so fired up, because it's such a it's a it's such an issue that's so close to home for me personally, uh, because I remember when my sister, she the Lord's been dealing with her heart and she's been talking to me about she's been she's want to be saved. And of course, she's come to her apostolic brother. I ask him to say, well, Brandon, you know, I want to be saved. And I have to tell my baby sister, who I love with all my heart, and I've changed her diapers. And, and you know, that was, that was, that's like my child. And, well, Brandon, what, what, what I need to do? I have to tell her, just like Peter tell her, baby, you got to repent. Uh, you got to repent from all of your sin. Uh, no man uh, can, uh, can, can, can follow him except he first deny himself. And if we're not preaching the same message that the apostles themselves preach, I will question our commitment to the love of God and I will come question our commitment to the gospel and the power of the gospel to change. So I apologize if I was too fired up, but it is something that that I am very sensitive to because it's something I'm still dealing with. And I have to be honest, uh, the young lady, we have been witnessing to her, teaching her, uh, her friend, you know, about the scriptures. She has no church background. And so Something like this coming from the Catholic Church, I can just see how the enemy kid you. Because when she sees this type of stuff, she doesn't have. My sister's been taught very well. She knows the difference. She she she's she she knows better. But her friend, she, I had to sit down and tell them, for them to be saved, they have to get a legal divorce. You talk about an awkward conversation. Like, <laughs> baby, if you want to go to heaven, you gonna have to go down to that same courthouse, and you got to get a divorce. And to, to, to see that car and I, and I lay with that name, but it just, it just, it really bothered me when they came out. Well, I don't think you're too, I don't think you're too fired up. I agree with everything you're saying. Um, yeah, I guess stay here. Uh, Steph's o away, but she's a mod, so it'll keep the room going for all kinds of crazy stuff to happen. Serendipity, I guess, is here. So I'll just, I'll leave you guys to keep talking. Um, I will say, yeah, River, a long time no see. Glad you're here. Feel free to jump on stage if you like, but just to answer um, the question in chat. If you sincerely believe in hell and it's as bad as you say, I cannot imagine the level of urgency you would feel about it. That's what makes me wonder how much people really believe it. Um, I agree with that, depending on, on the context we're talking about, like just your run-of-the-mill people that you ask on the street or in these discussions or whatever. But, you know, for, for myself and the Christians here and the Christians, you know, we, we talk to on a daily basis, yes, we very much believe it. Um, 
and then some people will challenge that and be like, well, hey, if, if you believe it as much as you say, then you should try to save these people at all costs, right? Even if you have to like, I mean, every now and every knowledge goes crazy. Like, even if you have to like pressure them or bully them or like, you know, torture them or imprison them. I'm like, okay, hold on. Glad, I, I guess maybe glad you don't believe in hell right now. Um, but repent and believe the gospel and then you'll say it our ways. But the point is, yes, we believe hell is very real and it's very urgent, which is why conversations that deviate like this kill me. I would much rather be like, hey, if anyone wants to know about eternal life, Pray to Jesus, pray to the guy in the book that says, pray to him, ask him for salvation, eternal life, and to be born again. If you believe that with a monochrom of faith you've been given, the Holy Spirit himself will live with you and guide you into truth and understanding, and you will have eternal life right then, just like that. Confess he is Lord, believe he raised from the dead, and can save you of your sins, and you repent. Turn and go the other way. Stop doing what you know Amen. is wrong. I would much Amen. rather have that conversation. Um, but, so... Yes, we do believe hell is very real, but one thing we also that could temper the, it makes me wonder because we seem so casual or cavalier about it, one thing that should temper that is just as much as we believe hell exists, we also believe the words of God that we believe, you know, are written in the Bible. Among those, it says no one can come unless the Spirit draws them, and our job um, in the Great Commission in Matthew, Jesus says, go into all the world. Um, which it seems like a lot of Christians believe that there's missionaries all over the place since that time. So there's missionaries and churches everywhere. Um, so that those people believe it. They take it very seriously. And Jesus says to teach them. And he says, go and to every town you go to, if people want to hear what you have to say, then stay there and teach them. Uh, but if they reject you, then shake the dust from your feet and leave them. And God is their judge. So that means if we believe hell is real and we do, we also believe what Jesus says and do it. So Jesus doesn't say bully them, pressure them, force them, coerce them. He says simply tell them, and if they don't want to hear what you're saying, leave them. So believing in God just as much I believe, as I believe hell exists and everything else that he says, um, I trust God that he's got this. It's his job. So he commands us to go tell people, and then he commands us to leave if they don't want to hear it. Um, so that that's why I think we don't you don't see us like doing things that would be borderline like illegal or outright like you know convert or or die like if someone it's like if it's like convert or die and they say well no i'm not going to convert what you're going to kill them and like guarantee they're going to hell that's messed up um so no we, we believe hell is real and we believe god just as much as everything else so anyways hope that helps uh carry on people have an awesome rest of your day yeah i just i just want